Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. What's the I? What's the I? Oh, I did. Issue, issue. Issue. Right? Issue. 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 And what's the last one? Discount. So there's a discount. So that means there's a draft taking place. There's entry. Entry and exit, right? Input, output. In. All right? Yes. Huh? So this is to register a discount. So that means there's a draft on, a, on, on some account somewhere, right? Yes. Now we know they have a closed account, so they ain't getting off of that. So it's getting off of your estate, you see? Mm. Now you understand why I said that your so-called signature is gold? Mm. Mm. Yes. Because your signature is a simply instructing the, the trustee to make movements for you in your account. That's why they want you to sign everything. Because we're Negro. Because you're under occupation. You are the real creditor. That's the point. So if you're the real creditor, how can you be the debtor? <laughs> yes. Yes. They want a contract. Everything they yes. Do, yes. They want a contract. Yes. That's, that's the system. That's what they want. Yeah. Are we clear? But well, keep in mind, all alleged contracts that are created in fraud remain a fraud. Yes. Okay. So you can't begin a foundation of something in fraud and then have another contract that's misrepresented and this validates the alleged debt that don't exist. In the first place. Oh, what's that thing called? And see, this is why they need their army to keep on bombing nations, to, to force nations to take that FRNs. So now what the nations have decided to do is not take them <clears throat> and start to dump them. And so what's happening is causing constipation. <laughs> And so that constipation is causing them to print eight billion an hour as we speak, and they've been doing it. And so to cover up the fact that the nations are dumping the T-bonds. And so what's happening is the feds are buying up the T-bonds and then issuing the finance back to the banks, and then the banks are constipated, they're not going to do, do it out into the community because it will collapse. And so, but if they don't, then what happens is businesses can't survive. So, you, so I'm telling you this so you can reason for yourself what's happening, why it's happening, and keep in mind that um, as the um, feds deny Germany their gold, and remember Germany is one of their main allies, mm -hmm. are, are we Man. cognizant? Mm -hmm. So the U.S. corporation <laughs> lost the capacity to appoint the presidency of the IMF I mean, on the World Bank. And so they can't cover up the corruption anymore because they don't have people in key positions anymore. And this was key to them maintaining this fraud that's been going on all this time. Do, we, do you yeah. comprehend yeah. what's happening? Yeah. Yeah. So their power to maintain this thing with the army alone is not going to cut it. See, so you've got you to look at the overall picture. And so the things that were in place to maintain the fraud, the power positions are gone. Are we clear? clear. Now you under, understand, comprehend why a couple of years ago when uh, the U.S., when the thing was getting ready to fall again, and keep in mind the Secretary of State deals with consular issues, and that deals with the resources and what you call debts and finances between nation states. That's the Secretary of State. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Now do you understand why Obama had to wear the Secretary of State's hat and go to China and India to mm -hmm. relieve about 54 billion of, of debts so this thing wouldn't collapse a couple years ago? Mm -hmm. 
because they ain't talking to Hillary and no one on them Europeans. <laughs> they don't want to do business with them anymore. Our problem is that we're not where we need to be right now. You know, this is where our sellout has damaged us. Now with the international community, with the rights of indigenous people, and so understand the importance and why we always told people to read it, to pay attention. And Raza put the, um, the uh, Obama speech in that, in that little booklet that he made in his cookbook. All right, so you got to look at that, then look at chapter 47. Back, look at chapter 47, and then you comprehend when uh, Michelle went to the Alhambra last stronghold and they came back and signed the rights of indigenous people. Are we clear? And then had people seeing them uh, coming through the doors with the Moorish flag to the left. Then he speaks about the, the Moors and he talk about, uh, he goes directly to Article 11 of the Treaty of Tripoli. And he goes into the middle of it, knowing that people will critique everything he says and then as soon as they go to the Treaty of Tripoli, they'll see that the United States is not a Christian country. <laughs> But yet the concept out there is that it is, isn't it? So our concepts are entirely wrong. However, this is to get you mentally tied back to your state again, because our people's concept is that the United States is the land, and that it's a Christian, Judeo-Christian country, when it's absolutely just not. Are we clear? So, So when y'all are punching Obama, what does Obama have to say about the Moors? So go on, just punch that in. And um, it's like on YouTube, or websites, etc. And he's going to start at the middle. And you already know they always trying to find fault with him, so you know he's chilling. So I'm going to read the entire Article 11 that Obama enters into the middle. He'll say, now our founding fathers, one of the founding fathers, you understand, of the United States, of my country, he'll say my country, because the order of the Europeans always trying to separate them. And I'm perhaps that type of get which means he ain't on the stock market. <laughs> now, so he goes into the middle of this article, knowing that when people go to critique it, they're going to find what's at the beginning of the article. So this is the article that Obama goes into. Article 11. As the government of the United States of America is not in any sense founded on the Christian religion, and as it has in itself no character of enmity against the laws, religion, and tranquility of Muslim, as Muslims, you understand, and as the said states never have entered into any war or act of hostility against the Mohammedan nation, it is declared by the parties that no pretext arising from religious opinions shall ever produce an interpretation of, I mean, an interruption of the harmony existing between the two countries. Now you understand why they're attacking all the Muslim countries in violation because they're trying to kill the creditor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why go out? Do you get the point? Yes. Now you understand what Drawley said to the Moors, said, children, you are just plain rich. Plain rich. And you don't even have any idea that you're the wealthiest people on the planet. Yes. Now, this is also important why, why um, over the years we say our major interest is to travel amongst different organized groups of people that are active and try to get them involved in the Moorish Divine and National Movement, not debating whether they go to temple, mosque, great seal, whatever. Get them involved. All of the dirty stuff will work itself out. You, you, understand, you understand comprehend? Because we've got dirty people on both sides, but if you get the people's concepts corrected, they themselves will clean it up. And just like anything else coming out of a grave, as dirt is poured on it, when it's put in the grave, dirt will be on it as it raises out of the grave. Mm -hmm. But you're going to baptize them and wash them off with proper knowledge. Mm -hmm. Comprehend? Yes. yes. 
And so a lot of questions that will arise in the development or the evolutionary development of the people, they will answer themselves. If the people who give them this information make sure their foundation is grounded. The rest of it they'll purge automatically because we're creatures of habit, certain things we hold on to by habit. But if you can get, like Drawley said, if I can get you all thinking again, you save yourselves. Right. <laughs> you know, and that's really the deal. If you start thinking, if you have component parts, you can start putting the rest together and you start seeing a greater picture and you will answer your own questions. You see, and this is why we also tell people, clean your language up. Stop calling the European white people. Don't disrespect them. Don't wish them harm. But stop calling them who they're not. Just like you stop calling yourself who you're not. In the process, you'll start purging little subtleties in your language that you may recognize and may not recognize, but you're actually casting spells. Because every time you call him white man, you've just called him sovereign, and you've appointed him as the forefront to your estate, whether you know it or not. You know, people need to know that words are glyphs, just like eggs. The shell is, it's a carrier. What you better worry about is that white and that yoke, because that's where the power is. And so words are glyphs that represent meanings. The etimon is your capacity to crack the egg properly and get to the yoke of it. And so look at the etimon as the yoke. Look at the etimon to the words what a nucleus is to an atom. It's mother, it's, it's zygote. And this is how you should be thinking when you're reading. And this is how you should look, use basic fundamental etymology without making it complex. All right? And so uh, to cut through the chase with that, so what you want to do, if you're looking at Middle English, Old High German, etc., Middle French, etc., always think this way. Take the etymon, which will be in the brackets, whether it's M-E, Old High German was derived from French ETC, and then have already in your linguistic chart your centuries or your, what you call your timeline. All right? So when you have your timeline, or right, just like you're dealing with um, Middle German or something like that, you know, school, uh, uh, Middle English, Middle German, you're dealing with like 1100 to 1500 in that area. And so you already know as a scholar that uh, when you're dealing with uh, a word that would be what was referred to as Middle German or Middle English, you already know it doesn't go beyond 1100. And so immediately you know when some scholar's writing a book and telling you about the so-called ancient black gods of Egypt, you already know that he's already lying. It's two things. He's either bought off, he's compromised, or he's, you know, he's got another agenda. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't appreciate some good work that they're doing, but you already know that they're lying. And logically, if they get to your babies, they've just robbed them, and it doesn't appear like it. You see? And so keep in mind that your um, drafters of documents, symboliographers, are trained, and they know these rules. And so we're trying to get our people to adopt at least some of the basic rules of communication. And, we, and keep in mind, there's no such thing as you graduating from school because it's from the cradle to the grave. Right. That's the other rule. That's the other rule. <coughs> you know, and so what our people do is like they, you know, like fill up a glass of water. They think that when they graduate from high school or college, then you got to put them more water in the bottle. You know, that stuff evaporates. Evaporates. Um. All, let's, now let's continue and, and, and let's look at um, the dynamics and um, think about trust and stuff like that. So we're going to finish this paragraph, then we're going to go into the next paragraph and look at how we should look at that, right? So there's a fundamental difference between paying and discharging a debt. To pay a debt, you must pay with value or substance, i.e. Uh, gold or silver, barter or commodity with Federal Reserve notes, and you can only discharge a debt with Federal Reserve notes, are we clear? Keep in mind, it's congressional records. You cannot pay a debt with a debt currency. So don't get the idea that you paid anything just because you gave them some greenbacks. You cannot service a debt. So you see these 
servicers, when they saw credit service and all that stuff, they talk about their services. <laughs> so don't even fall for that crap either. Third party interlopers. You understand? Write that down, third party interlopers. This is what you're going to deal with when you're dealing with third party claimants. You know, so called debt collectors yes. on the mortgage yes. and some law firms or something. They're third party interlopers. Yes. All right? That don't have the contract. Right. And they've already been compensated. So they're yes. just trying to get extra. Yes. So don't even go there. Anyway, so you cannot service a debt with a currency that has no backing in value or substance and no contract in common law is valid unless it involves an exchange of good and valuable consideration, quote unquote. Unpayable debt transfers power and control to the sovereign power structure that has no interest in money, law, equity, or justice because they have so much wealth already, you know what they've already robbed you. So if you look for due process, don't hold your breath. It's not a good idea. Their lust for power and control, and since the inception of central banking, they have controlled the fate of nations. And this is where you see the nations are dumping all their T-bonds now. Particularly when they take Germany to go take a walk when they ask to see their gold. And then some of the other nations started testing the gold bars that, that had the U.S. markings on it and found that their tungsten dipped in gold. They call that salted gold. Now, the only reason they ain't coming at them because they got to the market. <laughs> and keep in mind, the only reason why they also didn't invade um, Syria is because China has submarines behind each one of their battleships, mm. as we're speaking. Mm. China has nuclear subs behind each one of their ships in the Mediterranean right now. That's the only reason why they ain't going ashore. And then China put troops on the shore, and Russia has troops on the shore in Syria, and so the U.S. could not start that war that they wanted to start between Israel and Syria to cover up this thing that was going to crash because nobody's buying their bonds anymore, and this is why they wanted to drop that bomb over South Carolina. And because them generals drop it off the shore, that's why they poisoned the water in Virginia. I'm talking about it was accidental spill. No, it wasn't. They're trying to create new catastrophes. Mm -hmm. But they, their, hand, their hands are, because the world's looking at them now, they can't do the 9 11 no more. Yeah. Are we clear? Yes. I mean, don't mean they ain't going to do stuff, because they ain't going out you know, without a fight. But that's what's really happening behind the scenes. So, the Federal Reserve System is based on the canon law. That's the Pope's. Whoa. And the principles of sovereignty protected in the Constitution and the Bills of Rights. Bill of Rights. In fact, the international bankers used a canon law trust, quote unquote, as their model, adding stock and naming it a joint stock trust, quote unquote. The U.S. Congress had passed a law making it illegal for any legal person, quote unquote, to duplicate a joint stock trust. In 1873, see, so they created a fraud system to make sure everybody else can't counter it by doing the same thing to protect yourself from it. So it's, it's meaning that it's inevitable. Are, are we clear? I'm a, let me finish reading this paragraph, then I'm going to get with you. Sorry. So the Federal Reserve Act was legislated post facto. So post facto, write that down. That means it ain't lawful. It's a fraud. <laughs> it's de facto, and it's after the fact. That's saying, well, if we're going to write a law, so if George Washington and Lafayette try to renew their cell phone payment on Thursday, they're going to have to pay double. Uh, they wasn't using cell phones. That's right. That's the same thing. Are we clear? All right. So the Federal Reserve Act was legislated post facto, that's what post facto means for, that means now for them, you can't, and backdated uh, uh, laws if it existed before and it didn't, uh, it's like that. 
I can see George Washington going across the Ben Franklin Bridge. <laughs> it wasn't there. So <laughs> that's basically what this is. So anyway, the Federal Reserve Act was legislated post facto to 1870. So they're making it as if it was established three years before they legislated it to cover up their fraud. <laughs> So as you can see, so any other instruments that they create behind this remains a fraud. And there's no instruments that they can create that creates an obligation on you to be holding to a debt that you had no part in. Not only that, you never benefited from it. Stop it. Anyway, although post facto laws are strictly forbidden by the Constitution, and that is Article 1, 9.3. The Federal Reserve System is a sovereign power structure separate and distinct from the Federal United States government. The Federal Reserve is a maritime lender and or maritime insurance underwriter to the Federal United States operating exclusively under Admiralty Maritime Law and the lender or underwriter bears the risk and the maritime law compelling specific performance in paying the interest or premiums are the same. <coughs> Assets of the debtor can also be hypothecated. And hypothecation is where they claim your stuff, meaning that you're, you're going about your business and they're sitting in a liquor store or in a golf club and they make a contract and say that your stuff is theirs, and then they file it, and you don't know it, and it ain't got nothing to do with it. That's called hypothecation. And it was they create fraud instruments claiming your stuff. Yeah. Usually, in rim action is what they call it. Yeah, and then uh, 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 claiming, and then you're broke, and, and you're still working. You think you own your house, and you think you're paying stuff, and all this stuff, and they just said that you didn't, and they created instruments that said that you didn't, but yet they're gonna hold you liable to instruments they created in secret, mm -hmm. and then they transferred the debts of the stuff that they spent for each other on you. That's right. That's hypothecation. Mm -hmm. So they say your bike your bike is theirs. And so now a cop stops you and says, um, you just rode, uh, they stop you, you're riding on your bike. Oh, how come you don't got a seatbelt? Um, huh? <laughs> it's my bike. They say, you ain't got no seatbelt, get on the bike. And they take your bike. Because they hypothecated your bike. This is how they've been able to tell people to fasten their seatbelts in the cars, because people think it's their car, and they hypothecated it. Are we clear? Yeah. So if you understand these concepts, you understand all of the concepts on how you're supposed to deal with them. Are we clear? Now, and pay attention to this again, this is very important. Keep in mind, timeline. Drawley set up the old Canaanite Temple in 1913, right? for the return of the estate to the Aboriginal peoples, right? So listen to what I'm getting ready to read. So the Federal Reserve Act stipulated that the interest on the debt was to be paid in gold. So they created a fraud instrument and then demand that the debt be paid in gold when the instrument was a counterfeit instrument in the first instance. This way they were able to hypothecate the gold send it to the Queen of England, and then they take 40% and the 60% they send to the Jesuits. Mm -hmm. This is what's been going on. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. And now that they've stolen gold, now they're stealing your labor. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Prior to 1913, timeline, right? Mm -hmm. Prior to 1913, most Americans owned clear allodial title to property. Mm -hmm. So how many people wow. got allodial title when they they went and uh, so called bought their houses. No. How many people know what a loyal title is? No, no. Yeah, How many people? Raise your hand. How many people know what a loyal title is? Now, everybody look around. Turn the camera around. <laughs> Raise your hand. How many people know what a loyal title is? Absolute ownership. Well, that's part of it, but that's not. Uh, now you know what it is. I'm not answering. I'm not answering you to ask it. Answer it. I'm saying, do you know? Don't say you know if you don't know. Because <laughs> you can write it on the back of the piece of paper and we're gonna send it to you. We're not gonna discuss it, you're gonna write it on the piece of paper. And if you're wrong, 
Uh-oh. You gotta give, huh? I know. Peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> All right? So, prior to 1913, most Americans owned clear or loyal title to property, free and clear of any liens or mortgages until the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you didn't even have mortgages before right. Noble Drawley, right. until Mor Noble Drawley set up the, the Canaanite Temple mm -hmm. to get your estate back. Then Calvin, then uh, Woodrow Wilson met with representatives of the Pope of Rome mm -hmm. of Jekyll Island and sold the government. Mm -hmm. And here's your problem. Jekyll Island. So you understand why it's important for you to nationalize because you're the only heir. They still they keep on covering this stuff up. It can't last forever. Are we clear? Now most people read this stuff and read past that because they wouldn't put things together. Are we clear? Now keep in mind, I want you to keep in mind, March the March the 6th, 19. Now I'm gonna read the first page again. I'm gonna pay attention to the timeline because I'm I'm giving you timelines. I want you to pay attention to timelines. So June the 5th, 1933, the joint resolution to suspend the gold standard and abrogate the gold clause. Are we clear? So 1913, they introduced the mortgage and stuff, right? Yeah. Sold the government. 1933, they abrogated the gold clause, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, now pay attention to this. And this is proclamation on Joint Resolution 75, right? Mm -hmm. Morris Divine National Movement of the World, Province of Fez, Morocco, subsidiary of Parent Body Founder Sheikh Sharif Abdul Ali, City of uh, Chicago, State of Illinois, City of Philadelphia, State of Pennsylvania, and you already know they do the Mother's Parade in Philadelphia, and you go look in your Koran and you look at your literature and you see they took your birthright in Philadelphia, which is why they have the mothers for you there. Mm, and this is why they assemble at Six and Moore Street. Uh, and you go west, turn nine degrees on Broad Street, and then the battleground, which is City Hall, is designed just like a mosque. And then it has the law of the Moors right in the courtyard, the Zodiac Constitution. Then the north gate is a parapet, just like a mosque, and then the parade ends at the Grand Lodge, which is right one North Broad Street. Now keep in mind, with the uh, acts of Delano Roosevelt, right? June the 5th, 33, right? Mm -hmm. Now listen to this. Resolution, Jurisdiction Resolution 75, Act of Congress, April 17th, 1933. Hmm. See timeline, again, I just showed you timeline with 1913, now I'm showing you timeline again, 1933. This is April 17th, so there's a couple months. And then they crashed this thing. Resolution 75 Act of Congress, April 17th, 1933, petition for proclamation of Moorish American nationality name. Public bill. Jurisdiction founded upon the Philadelphia Home Rule Charters, Article 1, Section 1, 100, pursuant to Section 1 of Article 15 of the Constitution and Act of the General Assembly, April the 21st, 1949, PL 665, pursuant to Article 2, Chapter 2, Section 2, 201, 5, Section 2, 204, Pursuant to the article, to Article 4, Chapter 1, Section 4, 103, Section 4 105, Section 4 201, Chapter 2, Pursuant to the Pennsylvania Constitution, Articles 1, Section 1, 2, 3, 17, 20, 25, and 26, Pursuant to the 1st, 5th, 9th, 10th, 13th, and 14th Amendments to the United States Constitution of America, with Memorandum of Law on the Nationality Act. Supported by the 1933 Civil Rights Act pursuant to Article 15 of the United Nations International Rights Charter on Resolution 75, Act of Congress, April 17, 1933, in the City Council Chambers in the City of Philadelphia, a petition act for resolution 
jurisdiction, Article 20 of the Pennsylvania Constitution, Resolution 75 USC, pursuant to the Moorish Moroccan USA War Act Treaty, a petition for the notification. So this is a petition for notification of persons referred to and known as, comma, Negroes, comma, blacks, comma, colors, comma, Afros, comma, Africans, comma, and or niggers. Nationality is set forth non pro tonque. That means now for them. For the proclamation of said person's legal free nationality name known herein and hereafter as definitely Moorish Americans. Descendants of the ancient Moabites were sold to Resolution 75 of April 17, 1933, on the enumeration of the 1st, 5th, 9th, 10th, 13th, and 14th Amendments to the, to the United States Constitution. Timeline. What was that you just read? Oh, this is like, like from the uh, from the Reading Re Re the Town. That's one of my early books I made for the children. Oh, oh, oh okay. Yeah, you remember that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, so you about the yeah. Negro, the more and the yeah. Yeah. Hold on. or did yeah. you read that? That's the Prefect. resolution. Yeah. From yeah. The resolution. Yeah. Give me, give me that process. I couldn't yeah. read yeah. what Philly said. I couldn't read what Philly said. I couldn't understand the. You already got that, but that's what I was reading. From. No, no, I didn't. No, this, that's, this is in there. This is in, 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 that, in the back. You mean this is something different? This is No, yeah, but that's what I read. You don't need that, but that's in there because I was having But trafficking didn't say that. Uh, no, no. No, no that's, that's not what I'm saying. No, you showed the timeline. You showed that for the timeline. Oh, the I time got time. you. Yeah. yeah, but my question to you, though, is this. This, the, the, this verbiage what? that they're using about Negroes, Africans, coloreds, and niggas, that <laughs> That's your commentary on that, or they actually have No, that? that's what they issued from the chambers. Seven, the resolution 75? No, from Philadelphia. From on seven, on resolution, resolution 75. But that one didn't show, but that one, we can go see that. That goes with, I know. Because I saw it, I think, I, I don't know, what, um, uh, Sister Delilah. That's what I'm saying to you. I it, it was so No, funny. this is what I'm saying to you. Yeah, this is, this is. Yeah, I got you. This was issued from the chambers in reference to 75. This was the call out. In other words, what, they, what they're trying to do is save themselves from international lawsuit. So they did this now for them. And remember, even though this was from, like, like so from 49, um, from 33, it hadn't been pushed in the community. So this is the chambers, Philadelphia chambers, of, of, of kind of like uh, uh, putting a, a coat on their back. Nobody can't say that they didn't make they didn't make the call to the people. So they're saying and they're going yes. in to say their This is their resentment that, on that, uh, that, the, that the Negroes uh, that a petition was put in yes. known as by those people so that they didn't have yes. the record. Now that's the same thing as the Sundry Free Moors. Yes. Really. Yes. Yeah, okay. All and right, then, so what this is is commentary by the chambers on the matter. Of the set of, of, of 75. Got it. Now, and it, you can see this is like in one of my early books, Read Us in the Towel. Yes, recorded. It's recorded. It's recorded. It's in the chambers in the book. Mark 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 You can, you can see that in the April 17th. No, yeah. one other well, thing. Oh, go ahead, sorry. excuse me. Go ahead. Um, because they know that this is coming and it's over. Yes. And see, they're saving their butt. See, this is this is back to the principle. The birthright was taken in Philadelphia. Yeah, exactly. It's returned in Philadelphia. Okay, okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you fall down, see, you and it, exactly. Mm -hmm. But this is for people who are trying to save their butt because they're going to have to answer to this. Just like the Pope did the multi proprio. Right. You right. know, right. they're trying to save their butt because they're, 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 they're he's literally saying with the multi proprio. That the Roman curia, that means all corporations, they can no longer use the ultra-virus statutes for their protections of doing their business because they don't bag one, they're dead. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom, um, we're doing a, uh, and he just dug up some information that we offer, uh, some of the congressional records on that. Of course, the Treaty of Corona is included. Um, another, it's a bunch of 
according to one's included. Mm -hmm. But what really happened is if you go up to the multiple, mul mm -hmm. I never say that right. Multipropia. All he's doing is taking away the immunities that they gave. Exactly. And mm -hmm. all of the stuff the uh, uh, United Nations really, with or without the United Nations, mm -hmm. we are who we are. They really are like work on both sides. Mm -hmm. It's a placation. It's a placation to, on top of the fact yeah. that they know they're being charged with war crimes. It's like they can't, but look like this. The reason why the Pope retired early, yeah. not because he was sick, because he's on the run because they got a they got a they got a warrant out for him. I, I got the warrant. I got the right. warrant. I got the warrant now. Yeah. Oh wow. On the run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. This, they're trying to say that, but that's just inside the confines of the back. No, but just like when you're talking to the United States, you're talking about a political jurisdiction. So you have to know the distinction between corporate, because the, the Roman Curie is a corporate jurisdiction. They're just you trying see, to free themselves from yeah, being they're, responsible. Yeah, because that's people all. are going to be walking into them buildings called semi-churches and choking other people. Why is going to be in front now? They said it like they was going to be giving out water. Like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is a copy uh, of the Common Law Court of Justice warrant. This is the line that just uh, passed off. If anybody didn't see it, this is what it says. It looks like this, and trust me to pass it around after I read it. But it says the International Common Law Court of Justice, a lawful judicial body constituted under common law in the law of nations. In the law of nations. International citizens arrest warrant. It says in the matter of crimes against humanity, in child trafficking, mm -hmm. a warrant for his immediate arrest for questioning and trial is hereby issued to and against George Mario Burgo, Burgo Leo, AKA Pope Francis I, regarding his complicity in crimes against humanity wow. in child trafficking as mm. culpable individual and as, a, and as head officer of a convicted criminal organization oh, known woo. as the Vatican. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Say that again. This warrant is issued on the 15th day of March, year 2013. It is valid for a period not exceeding one year and is effective until March 15, 2014. Get him, get him. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But what, you want me to read it again? Yeah. Yeah. No. Who followed that? I'm not sure. It, it says name of issuing magistrate of court, but you know they never give a clear signal. Is that the Consular Court in Philadelphia? No, this is the New York. No, that's in New York. It's in New York. That's in New York. That's that court. That particular court. What kind of court in New York? It's international, the international common law. Um, international tribunal. Yeah. You want me to read it? Can you can you copy this down downstairs? Unit? Oh, all right. Then, uh, can somebody go down there and fix it? Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, it's <laughs> International citizens arrest in the matter of crimes against humanity and child, tra child trafficking. Child trafficking. A warrant for his immediate arrest for questioning and trial was here by using two again. Two and against. Oh, is your hey Mario Bergoglio, also known as Pope Francis the First, regarding his complicity in crimes against humanity and child trafficking as a culpable individual and as head officer of a convicted criminal organization known as the Vatican. Oh, one other thing, uh, I don't know if you've seen it, but we're going to put it on the site. And then if you have all these wonderful, great pictures of us in um, England, Britain, have you seen it? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, because what I'm thinking is, this is what I'm thinking is, they know that they are in trouble now. The Vatican is kind of like let loose. You know they have all of our artifacts. They yeah. stole. Mm -hmm. And so now they're releasing, they're, they're releasing a lot of them now into the public because they have to, lest they be smited. Mm -hmm. You see, that's what timing is. All this information is being released in truth. Now I know some of us still, you know, not in this room, but some of our friends, family, etc., still, I don't believe it yet. 
But, you know, unfortunately, and as Ty always said, you better put your skates on because it's real. You know, and the other unfortunate part is that if your familia is not up to par, be careful because they will injure you. They will injure you as you try to take your place amongst the affairs of man. They're not ready. You know what I mean? So they're going to bring you down. And they don't even mean to. You know? So you just have to know that, you know, forgive them for they don't know what they do, but you must be of this world and not in it and be right. able to know where you got to be. Right. That's right. Right? That's right. Um, but while I had this microphone, I do want to mention one thing while he's reading that. Because I was told, I was told that um, about the identification cards that some people weren't able to get into federal buildings. Anybody hear about that? Mm -mm. They won't. They will allow them into federal buildings with the cards. Okay, I've heard a few things a few times. Well, divine law governs all things, and one thing that we like to do is we all develop as we go. We've all been in a place where we didn't know, and we all have become knowledgeable because this whole thing is about teaching us to be ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And in order, right. and when you're being taught about being yourself, then what it is is that you have to be what you know. That's right. That's so right. being That's yourself right. is That's simply right. being what you know, you which is why we need to know and study so we do know. Right. So I was told that over and over again, I even had people call like, you know, your cards don't work because we can't get in the federal buildings. Maybe you need to write the federal government. And I was thinking, I'm not writing a letter for anybody about how to defend their own identification because it's a brief. And if I get into doing that, then what's that about? You can't defend it yourself? That's right. So, because I wanted to at first, and you know, I was consulting with my son and with Eddie and a few others, and they said, no, don't get into that. Because what you want me to do? Write you a letter because they took your peanut butter sandwich from school last week? That's what it would be like. So I held on to the thought, but I wanted to, because I, but I already have everything on the site to defend it if you're ready. Yes. But what I found out was this. The Von Walk of all of it, so either last Friday or the Friday before, I had asked, I was asked to go to a court, a federal court, Trenton, New Jersey, United States District Court, Trenton Federal Building. And I went there and I had the identification card. And it didn't dawn on me up until the morning that I was going that, oh my goodness, I'm going to go to the court, to the federal court, while well, I'm on my way there and I'm going to use the ID, ID card because I don't have any other anymore. And eventually you'll get to that point. And because you don't have it today, sisters and brothers, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It means that you just have to get to that point where you know so that you can be what you know. Right. And know that you don't need those corporate identifications okay. because a corporation cannot issue to anything but another corporation. Right. 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 So you can't have, they can't Good. issue you anything. And with that in mind, alludely, you have to have your own. Mm. Do you may want to support that Article 8, Section 1, uh, Rights of Indigenous People, you have the right to establish your own identity that yes. must be respected? Yes. You have to lean on that. Right. Now, the other part That's of right. it is this. When you come up to do anything in life, there's a spirit that emanates from you. Mm -hmm. A light that glows that you can't even see. Yes. But others see it, and that energy gets you what you want and gives you the response, gives out what you want to give out, and gets back the response. And that's why in um, Prophet Noah Joel Lee's writing, he says, give the best of yourself to others and expect them back, the right. best of them back. Right. So when you go to the federal court, like I did two Fridays ago, and you know, I did do this, right, because the brother was dropping me and three sisters off at the door, and then they were parking and coming back. And so then she was saying to me, well, you know, they might not let you have the phone in there. And then I was saying, well, wait a minute, I'm going in there with my identification. The brother's going to park. We don't know what's going to happen. I need to call somebody in case they don't let me in this building. I want to make sure we have coordinates on where I'll be at, where I'll be. If that would, I thought that for a second just as precaution. So I took my phone with me. You can take your phone with you. Just know how to use it. Don't be stupid. That's near right. Let your phone ring. That's right. That's right. You know, I mean, really. That's just right. use common sense. You know, be intelligent in your, in your manners. So anyway, long story short, I took the phone with me, cut it, cut it down so it doesn't ring. I went to the federal building. I had absolutely, when I repeat to you, not a problem. Right. At all. Right. Because I approached it like, you know, everybody else is giving their ID, this is mine. That's right. 
Who is here to tell me that's not right? They can't tell me that when it's not issued by a state or government. It is a government ID. It's just not the United States of America. That's right. Mm. It is a state ID. It's just not a corporate state ID. If you don't know how to say that in response back, and then if you still get problems for from the employees that they hired and trained that don't know shit, you didn't know nothing either. So wow. how do you expect them to know? Wow. And if you don't know how to present that in an intelligent manner, then you're going to go home with your tail between your legs, calling me up, talking about they didn't accept your ID. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't know how to defend it. That's right. Or to use it, That's excuse right. me, use it, let alone defend it. That's right. Because it's only a brief of who you are, it is not who you are. Right. And no one can tell you who you are but you. Right. And this whole thing about the Real ID Act, the real deal on that is, it's a call out saying, Hark, who goes there? Mm. That's all it is. Who are you? That's right. And if you don't know who you are, you're in trouble. Because they will find, they will use those instruments for you. Like you talking about business and doing that, debt and all that. Mm. We talk about now, it's come up to the point where Hark, who goes there? Mm. And that's even the Masonic lodges in it, right? Yeah, right. You gotta knock three down and all that. It's time. So now, the driver's license instrument, we have been saying for years upon years upon years that it is the thing that's gonna put you in, to use against you the most, to denationalize you. A lot of people may or may not have listened to that, but I bet you they're listening now. Mm -hmm. Because it's not to be issued to you as identification in the first place. Right. Because it comes from a corporation. They can't have any say so about you at all. That's right. They can't issue anything to you at all. So now they figure like this. They got away with it this long. Mm -hmm. The stuff is hitting the fan. The noose is being pulled tight, not only for Moors, conscious and unconscious, but for Europeans also. Yes. Yes. We are trying to do what we got. We gonna work with what we got to work with. And if we can put this thing out here, and if you really read it, it's disgusting. It's really under the Terrorist Act. Mm -hmm. Did y'all know that? Mm -hmm. All right? And so therefore, they trying to stop terrorists, terrorists from coming on the San Diego borderline, which is imaginary. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so the driving license instrument is now under the Terrorist Act. So either if you have one, you're a terrorist. Mm -hmm. They think you're a terrorist if they're giving it to you. Or if you don't have one, you're a terrorist. We don't fit neither one of those. So if it's not time to stand up now, when will it be? Mm -hmm. Because that's the only two things you're saying. We're doing this under the Terrorist Act to prevent terrorism. So it's associated with that. So therefore, either when they give you that driver's license, real ID, meaning that the other IDs weren't real, that's the first thing you need to think about, <laughs> you either are checked that you're not the terrorist, or that you are the terrorist, but you've been checked that you're not. You know, you scan through, right? Or anyone who does not have it is a terrorist. It, it, and, and the thing is, it's a catch-22 because this, they're using what they got. But I'll tell you it's a catch-22, but you know what it's saying to Morris? You better stand up and say who you are because you're neither of them. Neither. And forget about what it is you think you're going to lose. You got to look at what you already have, even though consciously you don't know you have it, but what you can gain. Right. Right. Not what you're going to lose because right. anything you have is tangible. Seriously. So with that, I just wanted to say that um, possibly overnight, Morris will make that call. Do you understand now why, you know, I got really bothered by that. I no longer want to give any, uh, I'm sorry, I have no disrespect to any grand sheik that might be in the room. I have no disrespect to anyone who's a member of the temple. I help someone myself. I am a sheik myself, but I don't tell people that because it's not in the title. Sheiks are born, not made. But what's going on with the temples is what I had suspected a long time ago. And I don't know if many of you read a press release. Remember I said that they were going to end up reporting? They were going to end up reporting um, 
other people who they think are not Moorish Americans to the government? Does anybody recall me saying that? Maybe a lot of my remember. To the color of government. Well, no, hold on. It is to the color of government. Here's the sad part. First of all, it's true, and it's in written form. I have the press release. And not only is it true that they're reporting it to the government and they say so, they don't even know who the government is. Uh -huh. They oh. have not identified. Oh. Oh. What they said is the U United States of America, in fact, they got a line that says all we want to do is live in peace and follow the laws of the U.S.A. That's what the temple said. I'm done with them anymore now in that respect because that's correct. Because first of all, the United States of America is an inferior government established underneath the law of the land, which is the Constitution of which all Moors are supposed to be enforcing. Yes, that's right. And if they say that they're doing that because the Prophet Nuhalli told them to, why don't they know the difference when someone has written something that violates it? Now, this is so easy. This is so easy, and this and is, is reason why. List. This is reason why we give people information, because when you're educated, it is so easy to refute this stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to do a press release on top of the press release in both response and support of it. Because much of it is true, much of it is false, much of it is assumptive, ETC. Um, so the same way I refuted uh, Judge Prater of the district court and broke down this claim, I'm going to break this down the same way. But I'm not going to condemn them, I'm going to support them, and then just simply show them where they're wrong. Well, right. well, first of all, you can't really support no, listen, them. Listen, but listen, yeah, but listen, they're not supporting us. No, I don't care if they are. They're not even supporting but listen, the people. This is what you do. You disarm people without so. attacking them, and it, leaves, and it leaves no refute, meaning that they did a press release. Half of, this, half of their arguments um, are spurious and conjecture. And Retire, much of it is Retire, bro. Retire, bro. Retire just holding up two glasses of water, one dirty, one clean. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That, that's his approach. I mean, it's not. No, no, no. Not, don't get it wrong. Yeah, don't you know get what I'm saying? Not the confrontation, no. but. Yeah, but see, this, this is the deal. Fact. This is the point that I'm making. This is the point that I'm making. One of the things that they do is they just like flowers did. Flowers did. They try to goad you into debating with them. <laughs> no, that's now, not that. Now, but listen, but, but, because they, but because they've listed us. That's direct, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And because it's coming from them in COINTELPRO. So, so all I'm going to do, I'm going to take each paragraph, break it down, oh, mine is almost done. show them what's true, what's false, and I'm also going to show them uh, hmm? this for the public, because the PLC, because this is the deal. Came back. Because like RV Bay uh, is like the number one website mm -hmm. in, in, in the world concerning uh, support and help for the Moors. Mm -hmm. And what has occurred is it's woken so many people up around the country that many of the call and tell operatives are jealous also because uh, we've set a standard that they can't even touch the, 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 the base yet. And even while we're self-critical and we've always looked at, you know, to improve, our worst, most of our worst stuff is better than their best. Mm -hmm. And that's not putting them down. Mm -hmm. It's because we've reached out to the people when everybody else was sitting on their butt. But can I and, just say something? Yeah. I, mean, I mean, in defense, not in defense, but okay, let, let, let's see this, all right? Yeah. Okay, I, I try not to say okay, but I haven't been right. around them. It should be all right, because they pay me it's all okay um, when they were murdering us right here. Um, the thing is, is that he says here, just as an example, okay, all right? A prevalent stigma has been placed upon the Moore Science Temple of America 1928. And its faithful members over the years due to the growing occurrence of this so-called Moorish sovereign concept. See right there, he doesn't even know that your nationality makes you sovereign. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So yes, we're going to teach them. At the same time, they're dangerous. Now, I'm going to go they're to dangerous, and I'll tell you what else. Let me just add this. I hear what Todd is saying. I work with him for years. The fact that RV Bay Publications is out there is being the glass, one glass, well, clean yes, exactly. and one class dirty. Exactly. So, so, so it's not. It's not that it has to be done again. It's already been being done. This person is attacking. Uh, even, even some of his own. Here's the good part that I like about it. It's not personal. I don't even know. It's, I don't even care. He's even attacking other temples. 
So what they're showing, like Dr. saying, they're exposing to the world who they are. So it's lovely because, you know, I even say you're even attacking your own. You're violating Act 6, I mean Act 3. You know, and then as far as sovereign, sovereignty comes with nationality. And so the sovereignty movement, now there are some ones out here saying that they're part of the sovereign movement and they are in great fear. Because the sovereign citizens movement is established for Europeans by Europeans. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I understand you, you, what you're saying, you, you, but I'm already writing mine. Give me Korean. Oh, I didn't bring, uh, anybody got Korean? Y'all got Korean? Oh, yeah. I bring that in. I have it on, yeah. Hold on. I have it on here. You know, and then they talk so about driver's license and IDs and taxes. Yeah, and they, and they're supposed to be grand sheets. So, so, yeah, so, oh, so. you know what, Todd, can I just do this? Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this one um, paragraph, this one definition. This is where they make their mistake. What they realize is that Prophet Noah Joel Lee didn't bring them anything new, just brought them back what we all had. Yes. So here's, I just want to do this one. First, first of all, stigma means any mark of infamy, any reproachful conduct which stains the purity or darkness, um, the darkness, the luster of reputation. If anybody's doing that, it's them. But here's the definition of what they've been already given when they were given this. If we are, uh, uh, let me say, if we are to enforce the national constitution, then we are supposed to be able to recognize when violations of it happens rather than have complacent ignorance as ignorance of the law is no excuse. Anything done under color of law, under threat to restoration, trickery, or deceit is void. Um, that's why the prophet said, don't pay attention to the 14th Amendment, because it's void. It is more from a lack of knowledge that Moors find themselves in their condition, and that is why the prophet said, if I could just get you to think of you free yourself. So your obligation as a head, a grand sheik of the MST of the, of the Moorish nation, is to be magnanimous and majestic. Yeah. Study, 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 and show yourself approved. Mm -hmm. The lawful position you hold as a grand sheik, able to make law and enforce law, is already established as follows, just praetorium. And it means in civil law, the discretion of the praetor as distinct from the legions or standing laws. Mm -hmm. That kind of law which the praetor is introduced for the purpose of aiding, supplying, or correcting the civil law for the public benefit. Is exactly correct. Now I'm going to go to the, I'm going to go to um, Circle Seven Quran, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to refute such statements, right? And I'm only going to read the um, first ayah, all right? And this is Chapter Twenty Nine, Holy Instructions from the Prophet. Uh, uh, and the sub and the uh, chapter is magistrate and subject. I'll just read a couple of them and just let you see how both when you recognize when when grand chiefs are either co and tell pro operatives or they're misdirecting. Now remember what they just said, right? So here's here's the certain set of Quran that they have. <coughs> o thou favorite of heaven, whom the sons of men thy equals have agreed to raise to sovereign power. Yes. Yes. See that? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Holy Quran. Uh -huh. uh -huh. We beat somebody up a couple years ago with this, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Right here in Delaware. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thou favorite of heaven, you, whom Tom. the sons of men... <laughs> Thy equals have agreed to raise to sovereign power and set as a ruler over themselves. Consider the ends and importance of their trust far more than the dignity and height of thy station. So it seemed like they got a little puffed, didn't they? <laughs> thou art clothed in purple and seated on a throne. The crown of majesty invested thy temples and the scepter of power is placed in thy hand. But not for thyself were these ensigns given, not meant for thine own, but for the good of thy kingdom. Uh -huh, we need uh -huh. to go further. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. So what occurs when some grand sheep talk about Morris talk about sovereignty at the dead probably didn't talk about that. It's gonna be two weeks. Although we're not claiming to be sovereign citizens, that's a statement Europeans are making. Moors don't claim to be that. However, if they did, they would not be wrong. It's just that sovereign and citizen don't go together in a sense. In it's oxymoron. Because if, you got a, if you're a national, you're sovereign. You know, not only that, no Raleigh seal, Moorish National Republic, 
federal government, Northwest Africa, that's no Grawley Seal. Morris National Republic, say no Morris National Republic has nothing to do with this movement. You see the whole point? That's Grawley Seal. But they only get away with that because they have not really been teaching people. Then the other issue is, no Grawley said, and I'll show you why a lot of times they don't, they make sure that people don't get the oral statements of no Grawley. Because even in the oral statements, no Grawley said, he said, um, if you're amongst a bunch of Moors that are creating confusion and not, obey, or not in, uh, carrying out my law, get out from under them. Go find somebody that's doing good and help them do more good. Thank you. And go help them do more speed, baby. Give me time. You want to say something? You want to say? Like your boots, girl. Boots, yeah, girl. Don't sing and take it back. She's tired, man. So, um, keep in mind, keep in mind that we're, yeah, let me take that too, Ross, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat them up on that. What? I'm going to beat them up, but I'm going to beat them up, see, I'm, I'm not going to do no emotion, I'm going to beat them in, intelligently. Now, also, now this is, see, these things are opportunities, because now we can tell people what qualifies a temple. Because if a temple ain't got a school, it's not a temple. That's right. Like selling somebody an engine without a car. <laughs> and if they've been doing their job, they wouldn't have to worry about all them groups out there. Mm -hmm. and if they had been carrying out the law. But what time do we spend in that, in that, you know, we can do as we've done and just kept doing what we do. <laughs> and now that it's coming to this head thing, they're taking the position really seriously. Like, for instance, in New York class, Trying to neutralize. They will come to the New York class. No, listen. They'll come to the New York class, and then they'll bring they'll bring their assistant grand sheik, and they'll come in there all sharp. You know, they all look the same. They got the long coat. You know, know what I'm saying? Like they all look the same. There was one brother. He was like rag tag on the street there, tag on, and now he's all straight. But it's all good. Cause and then they'll come, and then they'll check it out. Then they'll come the next week with the grand great sheik, mm -hmm. and all three of them is sitting down there. And divine laws of all the things, and they'll say stuff that you know doesn't make sense. Like, you know, we're celebrating the new year, right? Uh -huh. January the 15th. Uh -huh. Now, we understand the sign, mm -hmm. seven days from his birth, solar return, yeah. but that ain't the That's new year. That's a political year. acknowledgement. The That's new. not the new year. Right. And that's all they need to say, but they won't agree. So you correct, you're correcting them because in chapter one of the circle seven, it tells you that the solar stations are our God. So how are you going to go from the fact that March 21st is the new year? Right, right. So then if you can correct them as happened in the class, uh, well, I was actually this right yeah. before the class. Now they don't like you. So now they're going to come to your class and set up on the side yeah. corners and what try to recruit do? people to come to the temple. Yeah. Whoa. Now, oh, what they I'm do, do. I just don't have enough move. I'm going to gonna respond. That's all right. That's all right. I'm going to respond to this. I'm going to come up to a class, Ross. I'm going to respond to this. I'm going to come up to a class. Well, they don't come no more. They stay well, outside. They, 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 they like, <laughs> or they're in, or they're in oh, secret hiding. They're going to send, the message. They send the message. They're going to send message back. See, because like this thing is really so big mm -hmm. that we really just have to deal with other groups and everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But see, New York, the school is like a, it's like a headquarter that has spearheaded this thing for quite a few years, and they think they're going to come in here come up there and like intimidate her because she's a sister because trying to get her off her key. You know, but I'm going to come up there and defend her. You, you understand what I'm saying? We, be, we busy doing other things, but they ain't going to, no, I'll, I'll, I'll jump with her, I'll fight with her, take her peanut butter sandwich, and I ain't nobody else get her. Wait, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's this. That's family, that's family. I'll go get her peanut butter sandwich, but they going to get her, now they fight. Now I'm coming up there. She's been holding the fort down. She's been, you know, yeah. it takes work. Yes. People have no idea the hours, the time that she put in sleep in, in the chairs. Yeah. I mean, 
Yes, yes. Dri dribbling, dribbling down. Sleep. And Sometimes when we, you know, I could like pick on a lot of times we come in right. I said, he said, Raj, you want to, um, you want us to take the wheels? He said, No, I'm, we know. I'm driving. I told you about my fast <laughs> driving. <laughs> anyway, right. So, what? I mean, she's put it in. And let, let's be real. Let's be real. Let's yes. be real. Yes. Let's be real. True. True. So, I gotta give her a prop. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. Yeah. Has made an impact, not just yeah. in this country, but in the world. We yeah. talk to people from yeah. around the world. Yeah. Around the world. Yeah. And well, I'm not gonna sit back and let these half-ass, <laughs> fake grand chiefs come at her, thinking because we ain't around, we doing we we spreading out in other areas that she ain't got no back. Well, she got back. And I'm coming up there and I'm gonna bust them. <laughs> but I'm gonna bust them with knowledge. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. See, what it does, it just simply it just simply gives opportunity to drop other information that we ain't dropped. Because a lot of times we put stuff out and we put it out out of sequence, knowing that you're gonna have opposition. Mm -hmm. So they make a chess move, they say, chess mate. And we're going to come up there and take their queen, push it off the table. Well, you know, sometimes I'm thinking about something here. Yeah. This is what I like to do because it's a hate thing here. If, if, if in fact that's to be taken into consideration of the class and about that, yeah, now, I, I think I'm, I'm grandiose uh, advertise and let people know that when I'm attacking the temples, it's just a call out to our relationship with them. Yes. As the people, so okay. you know, like I might be sitting here saying to you, you know, look what they've done, and, and that is what they've done. It's memorialized. See, yeah. it, it could be all hearsay, but they put it in writing and made it a press release, oh, yeah, yeah. and put the people's names on it and said that they will be adding That's people correct. to the list. Which means what they're saying is, as the hordes in America increase, because that's what it is in the in the literature. They're increasing. The hordes of Moors, Moors are increasing in America. They're going to write their name down as a list and give it to some foreign government yes, entity to, to say they are not Moorish. Now listen, they're saying they're not Moorish American. Oh. But wait, no, it says it in the thing. They're not Moorish American. Who are they saying that? The, the letter. Yeah. All faithful and loyal Moors. Now, the not only that, and they're talking about the temple. Now, look, and, and but I gotta say this. I'm Last sorry. week we were there, myself and Sister Danny, we did a sit down mm -hmm. on the table because, you know, we decided that sisters, we tired of standing up running, you know, because I got a lot of air in mm -hmm. So we sat down, both of us together. And, you know, there was obviously some other grand sheet mm -hmm. there that we didn't see or something, and he gives me an email. Pugnant they are. I raised my hand seven times and you purposely ignored me. I know you got a problem with Grand Chiefs. This is in my email. I don't even know who he is. So he's, in, he's sensitive and insecure. But that's how they come. They're arrogant. You see what I'm saying? That he thinks he's that important to somebody who would actually have to ignore him? No, no, no. That's not what went down. So I just wanted to say they still come, but they come in different angles. But the truth of the matter is, is that sisters, we hold it down, don't we? Do we hold it down? Oh, yeah. We hold it down. Because yeah. it's like the mother energy. We're not taking that. Although sons, mourns with the pheasants on the beige, y'all the enforcers of the law. We're the lawmakers, which is really the ill. Right. We make the law, y'all enforce it. Mm -hmm. That's the relationship. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's supposed to be going down. But we, as mothers, we I'm remember we taught y'all how to use that sword. Now, Watch. Give me two weeks because like, I'm doing multiple things. I'm doing other people's personal stuff and I'm doing other stuff. Well, but I'm going to respond that. I'm coming up there. Do. Come up there. Same way we bust Prater. I'm busting them. <laughs> I'm going to bust them. Yeah. I'm going to bust them. And if any of them secret, I say, in the un undercover brothers in the, in the audience. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I'm busting. Because so, now I got dig I got dig my certificate out. I gotta find it. I got some. <laughs> no, you yeah, well we're gonna advertise that this <laughs> is gonna go down, all right? Huh? We're gonna advertise that he's coming to do this. Yes, I'm coming, I'm coming to up. To talk there. with the temples in their relationship with the people. I'm coming up specific. Yes. Got, that's the title. He said he's what, coming to what, the temple. What day is that Um when I'm going. I'm going to week, I'm going to do it as soon as possible. Uh, if you want so, to know what it is, you need to go to this site and look at calendar weekly. Listen, Arbor there's Day. weekly events and there's calendar events. Okay. New York is always weekly events. Everything else is calendar. Events. At MBT. Yeah. Huh? So MBT. I'll be going. Yeah. Give me a week or so. So no more than two weeks. So give me a week or so. 
I'm, I'm, cause I have sex, still can get a lot of other stuff out of the way. But don't come up there, cause I ain't, you know, I ain't having that. I'm gonna let you them know, come in free. They can come, let them come uh, in free. Give them a whole row. Put them back right. Put some velvet on the seat so they can feel very important. So I can wow. snatch it right from under. Wow. You know how they take the, the glasses and stuff and they snatch it. <laughs> well, wait a minute, Taj. Here's the thing. They're not gonna say anything if you. They ain't they got, they got to say nothing. The whole point. They, they, they ain't got, got to say nothing. Right. See, they ain't got to say nothing. Right. Right. The same thing I did in Chicago. Told them off. I'm telling them off too. Yeah. You know, deal over. It's it's like this. Oh, please. Let me. Tell them to get another camera from the side views too. Maybe assistant the line. You will put another come. camera from the side, the camera in the front, and you will put another camera so you come too. The Chinese bus is running again, so yeah. Oh yeah, Chinese bus is running again. Yeah. So yeah, so so we locked down a little bit. You know, I already knew they were gonna come back. But um, dig this. Now, find your certificate. I've been looking look for mine. Bring your certificate. Oh, you and mean give me my copy. sheet? My sheet is degree? Yes, yes. Oh, I got it. Yeah, so copy because you can't find none. Because I got, I got boxes, boxes and boxes and boxes. I keep losing. You know what I do? Seriously, this is honest. See how I'm doing this papers right now? Mm -hmm. I'll go home and I'll tr I will stopped filing a long time ago because I just ran out of space. <laughs> and and I'll put and then I'll put a note on it. And before I know, before the week's over, I, I got another pack. Right. Like this, and then I'm digging back, and I'll put something yesterday, and where did I put that? <laughs> then I'm going like this. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh -huh, I know what you mean. Do my uh, haul. I know. <laughs> and then, and and I'm gonna sit for hours looking for stuff, looking for stuff, because it's important to hold half hard copy. Mm -hmm. You know, because when they shut stuff down, you're gonna have stuff. But I got boxes and stuff. Then I took some down in the basement. And then I build shelves so to keep them dry, and 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 I've got this archive of boxes of stuff, and within days I'm in, in dated. Uh -huh. Okay. Anyway, yes. that's what happened. But anyway, you know so what I'm going to do? I'm going to address this. So do you know what's in your boxes? Huh? Are they properly labeled on the outside so you know what's in? Oh, there? I write on the sides of them, and then what I do? I put a cover. I put a cover sheet, and then then after a while I don't. And then okay. some of them I do because it's just it's moving so fast, and, I'm, and then sometimes I may not be even at the apartment for sometimes two weeks. Mm -hmm. They come back and it's just I, you know mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, you really, I'm really, aware. it's, it's like really, <laughs> yeah. And then I'm always doing stuff in between. But anyway, I'm going to bust them. See, because I'll pick on her. When somebody else pick on her, now we got to fight. <laughs> you know, so now they mess with her. I already know what they're doing. They I'm coming up again. See, because I usually, I, I'm, I'm usually nothing. cool. You know, this little Taji guy with the cheap sneaks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they're messing my girl down. I'm uh, pissed. I'm right. really, you know, but I'm cool. Right. Because I get them right here. Because that works, they, they can't beat me there. They can have all the institutions in the world. They get me fired up there. Yeah. They ain't winning. They, I don't know why they even start this stuff. But they're not going to show up and win. say, no, you're going to be there, but I But this care. is the deal. Other now, this is what I want you to do. Will. This is what I want you to do. I want you to take the certificate, right? The, 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 um, and then mark the name out. Because I don't want, you know, and then we're going to blow it up, right? And then we're going we're gonna to pass them out. Because I'm going to have it in the article. I'll make an article, right? And the whole article is going to be a whole page for itself in the site that's going to go on the site. It's going to be a response to this. It's going to be really a continuum. The but same they have pages and highways in ours. Remember they took it out? The original, you have the original one where it says that you're to go to the hedges and highways. Yeah. And I believe that they have altered that. That's what mine is hedges because and highways. Because the MST of 1928 is the infiltration. Yeah, no I, I, I already know. But this is the deal. This is the deal. I'm going to use, um, as a matter of fact, you that's why I did that. Art, that's why I did that class at Melandra Hall, '84. So you know how long ago that was. You, you probably wouldn't even hear. <laughs> you, you understand what I'm saying to you? That's what misunderstanding Morris movement is based on. That that uh, lecture I did at Melandra Hall on the profits, soul return, and surrounding lessons during that month. That's what made up misunderstanding Morris movement for the very same purpose. For this very same purpose. Mm. But, but Taj, I have again, to testify but, 
if anybody has not seen, seen the Chicago, the Chicago, uh, 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 when, when we went to Chicago, what, what was that, uh, what did they call that? I forget what they call it. But Is it point on the word? Well, it, 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 oh, well, gosh, I can't remember what it was, but it was um, um, Chicago day when? one. Huh? When? Oh, it was back in 2005, six, maybe. Um, it was called um, day, Chicago day one, day two. It was a two-day thing. And it was a four-part video because part one and two were one day, and part one and two were the other day. So you and now, who controls the Moorish yeah, nation is the name the of the yeah. one that really blew it out, yeah. which yeah. was the Sunday. Who controls the Moorish nation? That's all on YouTube. Oh, it's all over YouTube. Yeah, yeah you gotta I see it. See it's hard to uh, find it. On took it. some cuts off and put on a couple of their albums. Yes. Yeah. In fact, the, the CD that we have, the the CD we that have that says um, that you get with the Moorish move, um, misunderstanding, and it's called Simple Science Soldier. Yeah. That's a clip that a brother called um, what's his name Supreme. Supreme. Yes. He he actually he actually was the DJ for Lauren Hill, or he did some work for her. He's a DJ. Yeah. yeah. And he used to go around the front. And Supreme, I think he might have been here one or two times. Yeah, he's and back he in New York now. Yeah, he's in back no, in he New York moved. now, but he was in Philly. But he was in Philly. Yeah. But at any rate, he took the clips from that particular um, lesson, uh, lecture in Chicago, and put together a music clip about mm -hmm. nine minutes long. Yeah. I always bring it with me. I don't know how my hand yeah. But at any rate, uh, it's so powerful because what actually happened <laughs> When he when when the call went out that who controls the Moorish nation, there was a couple of them, but at least one that came, Grinchy, with his a bag with his with his what uh, certificates and mm -hmm. and <laughs> yeah no really it's true it's true I was there and I was still green but I I remember this and the energy was great um he came with a bag because he was going to show his stuff to say that he controls the Moorish nation anyway he got up and it's on tape. Yeah, That's right. Up, In fact, up. he did say it. He said, what did he say? He's he got pressed to the point. It's on the tape. These are my sheep. What are you doing coming here messing with my people? Ooh, what right. did he say he that for? Taj went here. the other way. And Taj is just waiting for um, nature to just, you know, yeah. put the mic down because nature is just like really yeah. calm. And Taj was not calm but still intelligent. Shit was, it was off. I mean, excuse me, my friend. It was awesome the I way he water, produced it. I took water and did this. <laughs> oh, he did. It was really, really yeah, awesome. So I told him oh, water. And he said, the blood that burns in my vein is the blood that burns in yours. Wherever yeah. I go, I'm home. Like, he's trying to say, why are you coming here from New Jersey yeah, territory yeah, yeah, to yeah, Chicago? Yeah, this yeah. is my place. Yeah. So he was saying, no, I'm a more. The blood that runs in your vein runs in mine. I'm home wherever I go. That's right. So that's kind of how I got kicked off. It's really good. Y'all should listen to it. <laughs> All right? tell, tell them no. Didn't, didn't y'all start reading chapter 29 and his wife started reading it? Oh, oh, no, yeah. no, 25. Oh, yeah. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm a yeah. test. Yeah. That was all the yeah. Taj started reading the holy uh, uh, covenant of the uh, Asiatic nation, right? Chapter 25. And everybody started chanting right. that. We are right. Right, right, right. Um, uh, Y'all don't have a Quran here? Because that's, that's yeah, the right. way to close, close the thing. 25. Pull out 25. Check this out. Ty starts reading it now. Her husband, the, the man's hot wife, was in the audience. No one knew that was his wife. He starts reading chapter 25, right? And the sister starts reading it with him, right? At the point, we found out later that was his wife. At the point where the way she started reading it, because she knew it from the back of her hand, it gave it some power. So you got Taj reading it, you got a sister joining in, you know, ye are the children of one father provided for by his care, and the breast of one mother have given right. you some. By the time we get to the second verse, she joins in. And let the bonds of affection therefore unite thee with my, thy brothers, that peace and happiness may dwell in thy father's house. And when you're separated in the world, yeah, this is a relation that binds you to love and unity, and prefer not a stranger before thine own blood. If thy brother is in adversity, assist him. If thy sister is in trouble, forsake her not. So shall the fortunes of thy father contribute to the sport of his whole race, and his care be continued to you and to your love to each other. It was powerful the way that it went down.
because he's ready at the right time. We found out later that was the grand sheep that came here to say that this was his sheep. That was his wife. Whoa. So we knew that he wasn't going to be sleeping with her that night. Because <laughs> <laughs> she was on our side, our side. We found out, but you know, when we came up there, when we flew up there, we, uh, we had to, to adjust to the culture because we didn't, you know, we didn't know. I mean, we know how it rolls up there, right. but it quickly took us a minute to, to discover they run like gangs. Oh, yeah. They yeah. run like you know, nation, oh, yeah. Yeah. gang, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we supposed to be scared, right? Right. Hey. Relaxed on oh, right. angels, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, it's not just, it was uh, quite funny. But anyway, it was, so, it was great though. Jail woman rejection with authority, say more science temple. That's probably a misrepresentation too. No. What is well, no, she cites more science temple, she's probably more movement. This what? Come on, for a second. What what what? This is Jail woman rejects US authority, cites Morris Science Temple. Okay, so the woman in orange and white stripes rug started to cry. I've been kidnapped, she said, from behind the glass in the, like the interview room of Pasco County Jail. I don't belong here. The woman in sights, she is Zori Akila Batiti Matalawali Zurich's Bay. A grand chicas in the more science temple of the world. She operates a branch of the temple in her Spring Hill home. She arrived from Columbia, South Carolina over the summer to tell other black people. Oh, she arrived home. She arrived from Columbia, South Carolina over the summer to tell other people black, other black people, they are not really U.S. citizens or subject to its government. Instead, they are more rich with ancestral roots in Morocco. When you belong to another government, you're not subject to someone else's rules and laws, she said. Her argument has a familiar ring to experts who track the sovereign citizens. See that? Let me stop right here. There's this no is where the problem goes. They have chosen to put more is under the sovereign citizen yeah. movement, which belongs to the European. Mm -hmm. In fact, when they grab you up, they'll put on their radio, the sovereign citizen, <laughs> sovereign citizen, and you have to immediately say, oh, no, 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 let, him, let that go out. I'm not a sovereign citizen from a sovereign citizen movement. Yes, you are sovereign, but it comes with nationality because it never stands on its own. Yeah. Europeans are trying to be sovereign because they can't be sovereign, so they had to start this uh, movement about sovereign citizens, and a lot of our ignorant Moors are throwing themselves in it. They're not even saying they're Moors. They're just saying they're sovereign. Mm. But you can't be sovereign without a nationality. That's right. So it's like an oxymoron. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and one other Now, the European, just a minute. The European uh, uh, stopped me in Maryland a, a couple months ago and, 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 and says, uh, let me see a driver's license. Oh, driver's license? I'm at, uh, for hire. He said, oh, you're a sovereign citizen. I said, no, that's, that's your Europeans wanting the republic back after they lost it, talking about the democracy order. That's right. Now, you know. they will write things that are, that, are, that are untoward in the newspaper for people to read, yes. but they won't write the good stuff that happens. Yes. You're not going to see it. This is why, and that's another thing. Another thing, in this report, which you'll find if you didn't read it all, it says that the, 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 this MSTMA is complaining about the Southern Poverty Law Firm, uh, Law Center report. They should be and how, that before. And then this is what I said in my response, which I haven't quite finished yet, and how it's, you know, giving them a bad name because, you know, they're heaping them along with whatever. I said, well, check this out. What is Southern Poverty Law Center? Uh, a law center with a magazine or newspaper of their own? Is that who they are? Well, you're supposed to have your own newspaper. Why don't you write that? Right. You know, like, that's why the prophet yeah. said that you needed your own newspaper maintain, to do what? To, to shovel yourself out of the heat of the, the avalanche of lies that would be heaped yes. upon the moors. So why are you sitting there complaining that Southern Poverty Law Center, which well, is just an organization knows. that has a newspaper, has written something? Mm. Write something back. Then I said, I myself have personally wrote something. You'll find it on our day publications. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So what the heck? You know what? You, I wanted to say as I was reading it, you sound like a little baby boy crying. That's what you really sound like. Because that's what he sounds like when you read it. You sound like somebody complaining, although he thinks he's telling on the government. And then I said, but you have not identified the government. 
-hmm. You're gonna tell on the government. government. One government. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Are you talking the pseudo government of you know what? This is the perfect opportunity to even use both of uh, Lewis McFadden's speech from the uh, Congress, Florida Congress, mm -hmm. and uh, James Traficant, and go show the record and show that these people are not only incompetent, they're COINTELPRO, they just mm -hmm. assume that the Moors don't know. Mm -hmm. right. And so when they throw the word government, the government, and paying taxes, now with the enforcement of the Constitution, indigenous people are not taxed. Mm -hmm. Now how are you going to pay a tax, not only that, pay a tax when you ain't been paid? Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, about that. Wow. Not only that, how you gonna pay a tax that it, to huh. to an entity that's been dissolved? We got the corporate papers. We're show the corporate papers too. <laughs> yeah, and it's been well. dissolved. <laughs> and these guys are defending a fraud government. Mm -hmm. Talking about you're in Boston, Boston, Temple, Yeah. Now, no Dwali said. He said, the world recognizes you by your connection to the Moorish Divine and National Movement. He said, Moorish Science Temple, America. Right. And he said, concerning more Science Temple America, Noble Drawley said, the half has not been told. Yeah. If I told you everything, you would go back to sleep. This is interesting. Here's the deal, and, and especially now with this thing. Uh, if you're going to have, uh, I realize, if you're going to have a driver's instrument, you, it, it's for commerce, so then you can have it for commerce. But actually, eventually, we're going to realize that we should not, ought not have it at all. Okay, all right. Now, some people, even though that be true, it's us collectively that have to enforce that. You know, because if I don't have it, you do, and then you tell them, you know, you know, we have to be at one. So, like, for instance, here it is right here, and they know that. They said, yeah, she said that, but she was dropped, she was in, uh, she was struck, stopped because of a suspicious car tag. So, here's the other thing you bought the tag, yeah, you paid for it, it belongs to you. But if it's not really uh, updated, don't put it on the, on the conveyance right. and right? Because that's what they do, they shoot not, tags. Not just that, the Supreme Court said, this is the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land said, here, here we go, uh, give me your, your bifocals. Because hmm? yeah, a couple of people haven't been here. Well, right, give me, who's, been, who's first time here? You've been, oh, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody? I'll know you all. Right. So, <laughs> so you're going to use your own tags, of which we have to collectively decide what tags we're going to use, and so that they'll see the same tags all the time and know what it is, rather than you know something different. And everybody, it's like this: if everybody overnight is like beef of vendetta, almost, yeah. we just say, get back the driving instrument unless you're using it for commerce. Now, if you're using it because you need to have it, because a lot of us need to have it even still right now. Even, you know, well, I don't have mine now, but I really didn't intend to give mine up. I was going to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. But divine law made it so that it could, it just had to, the time had to be what it was. Right, you right. You understand? Right, right. It just was, because it was about to expire, and yes. they put some bogus thing on me. Mm -hmm. And so before I could fight, before I could re-inspire, I had to fight the, 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 the traffic stuff. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't yeah. jive up right. right. And so it was gone. And that was that. But I have to say this, too. I remember, it ties to my witness, you know, you will never forget this. I'm not embarrassed about it because we have to um, learn in degrees. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right. But I remember being, when we were going back and forth in New York early on, it's been seven years we've been doing it. Woo. And I said, well, how am I going to drive if I don't have a driver's license? So you're like, not driving. <laughs> right, but that's what I was saying. I couldn't get it. And so the answer was, well, let's see, do you have the keys to the car? Yeah. Well, open the door, <laughs> put it in the kitchen, and turn it in. <laughs> now that sounds simple, but guess what? That's how it's, that's how it's done. Yes, yes. It is how it's done. Yes. Now, here's the good thing. The, any young children today, because us that are older, we got that nice, we tied up in that search, we tied up, we get out of it. We are tangling ourselves from the web. Yes, we are. Oh, yes, we are. But we will be forced to do so as, as God, your God, tells you to. Even if you think you're not ready, then you, you got an answer. It's either A or B. Which one are you going to take? You're trying to get to C. You got to take one. Uh -huh. You're not going to even move forward if you don't choose one of those routes. Right, right. You don't like A? You ain't too sure about B, but you still got to choose one of them to get to C. Yes. So sometimes your time comes. So here's the deal. Even when, even though a lot of us may think we're not ready or whatever like that, 
the universe is going to tell you when you are. That's right. And you're going to have to make those decisions at that time. That's right. And those who aren't, you know, you don't get on them because I was like that. I was like, I didn't get it. I get it now. Mm -hmm. But it takes a while. Mm -hmm. So, and I wanted to just add one thing and it just slipped out of my mind. But it's very important that, like, even right now, once we be what we know, and we collectively do it. Like there's no more, well, you do it and I'll try. Right. And, 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 there's a, and I'll see what happens when you do it. <laughs> and there's another thing that is very, very <laughs> No, come on, yeah, you know it's true. Yeah, yeah, right. Seven years we've been at the class, we've heard it yeah. all. We've been a part of it all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've gone through the road ourselves. We know. But the other thing that's very important, and if anything could be put out now so that we could get to where we got to get to, because it's not going to happen as long as we're still in clubs. If we're in clubs, we can't do this. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. In other words, you're more. You're going to be a That's more it. whether you're in the club That's or it. not. That's it. So if you decide to join a club, you don't know the difference between a club and when you're transferring your birthright. Your birthright can be bought, can be sold, can be transferred. That's right. Therefore, if you enter into a club, association, group, society, and you now think that they're giving you your sovereignty mm -hmm. and signing you off and all that kind of stuff, mm -hmm. you just transferred your birthright. That's right. That's all right? All right? Because you can't defend it yourself, but they're going to defend it for you. No. You just transferred it. So now, if you're a more, and you are, whatever club you get involved in or association, you can, you can join a club if you want. But you're a more when you leave the club, and you're a more when you came to the club. And you was a more before you came that there, is. you just became conscious. So the clubism has to stop. I just got someone asking me about um, being in, what is it, um, secret societies, Masonic groups. Oh, well, yeah. how is it? Yeah, on the way up. I want to talk to you too, Taj. Uh, yeah, 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 Ricardo, brother yeah. Ricardo. Um, and from the area yeah. where the, the the thing is, is that how will I be giving it up if I if I join a Masonic order? Well, because because you took an allegiance in the Masonic order to waive being able to speak for yourself. Right. That's why. Just that simple. And then you took an allegiance, most of them say, if you go to court, do some signs and symbols in order to get out, to show that you are a club member with mm -hmm. the judge and the, uh, I mean, yeah. magistrate. Or That's why. Organized criminals. So you're not exercising your rights, you're acquiescing by signs and symbols and that being in a club. Mm -hmm. That's how the allegiance is missed. And one last thing, Ms., you need to tell them about the Thomas Jefferson article in the newspaper. Yeah. Oh, yes. That's yeah. important, it was in the newspaper today. Oh, right. I didn't What's know the newspaper? Oh, I, I, didn't, I actually didn't bring it. Uh, no, but you, you read it. I didn't read it. Yeah, it was a no, it, it, synopsis. It was just uh, basically. Well, first of all, you need to, Mike, and secondly, oh. everybody knows that all the presidents up to this day for the United States of America Corporation put their hand on Thomas Jefferson's Quran. Mm -hmm. I mean, just remember yeah, that. Remember. Yeah, to take a pledge today. Absolutely. Uh, Salam. It was just a uh, it was an article about Thomas Jefferson, and it was going in on how he had a Quran, and um, a lot of he received a lot of uh, what you want to say negative energy because he had a Quran and he was a European, so they was you know I guess what you call a quote unquote you know lover whatever you know, but he was explaining how it didn't matter to him if his neighbor believe if it was one God or 20 gods, you know, it's still divine science with this book. So, you know, he had his own library, had his own Quran, and of course, a fire happened, right? So he lost his literature, and he went to recover a Quran, but he mostly lost everything he had in the fire. But, I mean, most of us know that his Quran is still in the Library of Congress today. And Congressman Thorpe. Yeah. Come and take oaths on it. Absolutely, they still come and take oaths. I thought he, I thought Jefferson was atheist. A what? Atheist. No, he was a deist. Deist. Yeah, he was deist. Yeah, he was a deist. Well, see, yeah. this is back. This is back to people not understanding, not knowing how to read. Right. The so-called founding fathers were deists. Christians call them atheists. A deist is those who study the ancient Egyptian principles of Dawiti, which is the planet Mercury, from which you get the term deity. Mm. And that's a deity, or what you call Dawiti. Right. Mm. All is Dawiti, as we get deity from. It's actually the planet Mercury. Right. Right. 
And so all of those were deists, and this is why they were all ministers plenipotentiary under uh, Sidi Muhammad with the founding of this nation. And this is why they were the first praetors after George was assigned. He was not elected, he was appointed. This is why once in a while you gotta read that George Washington's letter to give people a concept of what's going on here. Because if they don't know the background, when people start misrepresenting this information, the people start believing them because they don't have a background in history and don't know that these are actually traitors. And the reason why the government is messed up because the traitors have been ruling. Mm -hmm. And so when people who are actually enforcing the law, like the conscious Moors, we're accused of being anti-US when we're anti-democracy order. Let me show you an example. I'm going to read two things and then we're going to close out. And this is also, you have this in your papers. And so let's look at this. And also I'm going to show you how easy it is to refute people like this. This is why we always put out information and this is what makes R.B. Bay uh, such awesome. a powerful site. Awesome. Yeah, a little bit more than awesome. Yeah. Have you noticed I improved the navigation? Yes, I saw it. <laughs> that should have been done. But. Now, um, the following law definitions are presented word for word, firmly discerning Excuse and denoting. You have this in your bifolds. You'll see this. This is uh, Republic Truth versus Democracy Fraud. All right? Now, I'm going to show you sources. We already have stuff waiting for them. They just, they just, they shouldn't have stuff. They should, don't, you know what? <laughs> don't pray and ask for stuff. Right. Because you might not get what you're looking for. Or you might get what you're looking for. Don't start, they, 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 they just shouldn't have started. You know what I mean, please? Anyway, so now, look, look you all. So this is from the military training manual, right? Mm -hmm. And pay attention to this. This is in the military training manual, so that means all politicians have this information. All military men have this information, right? Mm -hmm. This is, um, first of all, we, uh, section four of the Constitution, right? Article four, section four. Article four, section four of the Constitution for the United States of North America. The United States show guaranteed to every state in the union, this union, a republican form of government and shall protect each of them against invasion and on application of the legislature or of the executive when the legislature cannot be convened against domestic violence. So you see for the, any of the state to be a part of the United States they must have a republican form of government, are we clear? Yes. That's a requirement, are we clear? Yes. Now let's go to the military training manual, and this is United, uh, the Soldiers Training Manual, TM2000, United States War Department, November 30th, 1928. So now we got 1928, and so that means they talk about the Temple of 1928, dates again, timelines. So, and now probably say enforce the Constitution, right? Right. All right, divine warning, right? Now, this is TM. 2000-25-118-120, democracy. Democracy is a government of the masses, and authority is derived through mass meeting or other form of direct expression. It results in mobocracy, attitude towards property is communistic, mm. negating property rights, Attitude towards law is that the will of the majority shall regulate whether it be based upon deliberation or governed by passion, prejudice, and impulse without restraint or regard to the consequences and results in demagogism, license, agitation, discontent, and anarchy. Republic, TM 2000-25-120-121. Is derived through the election by the people of public officials best fitted to represent them. Attitude towards property is respect for laws and individual rights and a sensible economic procedure. Attitude towards law is the administration of justice in accord with fixed principles and established evidence with strict regard to consequences. A greater number of citizens and extent 
of territory may be brought within its compass, avoids the dangerous extreme of either tyranny or mobocracy, results in statesmanship, liberty, reason, justice, contentment, and progress. So you can see they're opposites. Mm -hmm. And so the Moors support the Republic, which is the Constitution in accord with the divine warning by the proper for the nations. And them grand chiefs dis dis support the democracy order USA, which is corruption. That's how you can tell COINTELPRO. See how easy it is to knock stuff down? But if people don't have knowledge, they can get emotional and pick sides right. on emotion. We don't deal with emotion, we deal with knowledge. Problem is we gotta re-educate our people so they're not dissuaded by these people. Mm. You see the point? Right. Now let's go to the Supreme Court and read this, then we close this out. This Supreme Court case is this is stare decisive or what you call dress judicata. That means this is established law of the land. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Supreme Court, that's the highest court in the land. That means all these inferior state courts cannot supersede this. Are we clear? Yes. So we're going to read these, and we put 13 cases in there in harmony with the womb of woman, in harmony with our right of movement that our mother gave us, right? The right to travel, the right to motor conveyance, the right to locomotion are all absolute rights. And the police cannot make void the, the exercise of rights, state versus Olmstead. And the use of the highways for the purpose of travel and transportation is not a mere privilege but a common and fundamental right of which the public and natural being beings cannot be rightfully deprived. That's Supreme Court. No, so how are, you going to, how are you going to, how are they going to tell you you need a license? Right. Hold on, now let's go read number seven. Number seven, traveling in an automobile on the public roads was not a threat to the public safety or health and constituted no hazard to the public, and such a traveler had nothing, had Nothing, oh, nothing more than due care as regard to tort for negligence to the public, and the owner owed no other duty to the public, e.g. the state, he, she, and his or her auto, having equal rights to and on the highways, roadways, and as horses and wagons, etc. And the same right is still substantive rule in that speeding, running stop lines, traveling without license plates or registration are not threats to the public safety and thus are not arrestable offenses. So they arrested her for not having their license, which is a violation of law. We don't even go, need to go further. Now, when people say, well, you got that license, and license is a contract, blah, 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 let's read, no, or let's read number 13. Lack of federal jurisdiction cannot be waived or overcome by agreement of parties. And the want of jurisdiction may not be cured by consent of parties. That means you can't make any contract and give them up. And they can't give you no contract and take it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are we clear? Yes, clear. So does people lose their rights just because they got a so-called driver's license? No. No. It cannot be jurisdiction. It cannot be cured by agreement. You can't even agree to it. That's the supreme law of the land. This is why we've got to keep teaching people because people amongst you, as well as the Europeans been stealing these people's rights because they don't know their rights. Mm -hmm. And it is done under the U.S. democracy order, which is violating you. That's the license that is talking about there, because it only applies to corporations, does not apply to natural beings. And see, once you understand these things, you don't even need to go through no kind of really, really BS. Stand the law on the land. And they're going to do what they do. However, now you've got to sue. Now, this is why the Pope's of Rome is, is pulling what? They're claw from under them, because now they're liable. And this is what Ron Class did to them Europeans in, in um, North Carolina. That's why I had to take them things off their doors. Uh -huh. North Carolina said they, the police are not, are not part of the state. They are private contractors. Uh -huh. They're no different than, than the, the security guard at Sears. Yes, <laughs> Run around the street with guns on them <laughs> and telling you what you can and can't do. That's why you're going to go after their bonds. Are we clear? Yes. yes. And then they got these guys around talking about your license. You, you can't shine your tires without a permit. <laughs> <laughs> Once you understand who they're not and who you are, you already know what you're supposed to be talking about. You understand? The deal of it is we are working with our people to get them out of the mental servitude so that they can 
flow free in their thinking so that they'll know how to respond to these things. And it doesn't have to be exact as based on divine law. It's just that our people have been abridged so long that they keep thinking that they got to find some law to give. You can't give you a right that already belongs to you. That's what a birthright is. So you must know the difference between uh, rights and privileges. Privileges can be licensed. They can be taken away because they're given. Birthrights can't because you're born with them. That's why Duali say we must know of our higher self and our lower self. Now you go into the Kabbalistic knowledge. Right? Mm -hmm. And know the truth about our nationality and our birthright. Now you understand the aggregate claim of right to the aggregate land. And so the deal of it is, he said, I brought you back your names, your nationality, and the title to your lost estate. What else do you want me to do, Kate? Mm -hmm. All I understand is now. So the claim was yours before you were born. So how is it some club, some temple, or anyone else going to talk about they, that you can't be who you are unless you're with their club? Mm. Doesn't make sense. And then Noble says, well, he says, I'm a universal prophet, and my philosophy will be universal. I came to you more because you need me the most. He let them know that they don't own me. Prophet for humanity. Are we clear? Mm -hmm. Again, it's so easy to knock their stuff down, but like they started, it's kind of, you know, it's negative, it's uncomfortable for a minute, two minutes. <laughs> but what we need, you know, once in a while we need a little bit of fire under our butt to, to bring the best out That's right. of right. Because of us. They, they, they can try and do alliances with these uh, pseudo government entities. They always have been. See, let's look Even at this. Even though they, states can't make alliances. But let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. The very fact of what they're doing, which means they don't even understand government. Mm -hmm. States exactly. can't make treaties. Exactly, exactly. That's they're subordinating they're they're themselves to some Southern Law Group Klan members. They're being informants. <laughs> <laughs> Klan members. That, that's what it is. And what we have to do is prove that we're not allowed in the vote. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, we every sick massa, sick or something other world massa. <laughs> They said things that's not nice talking about they got rights. <laughs> we ain't with them. They ain't part of us. That's what they're saying. That is what they're saying. Did you see Django? Oh, yeah. 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 When at the end of the movie you said everybody can go free and say goodbye to Miss Candy, but not you, Steven. No, not you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody's <laughs> oh. Islam. Yeah, Islam. Yeah, um, Raz and both y'all, y'all started talking about the license plate and my conversation went somewhere else. So I wanted to find out. No, see, this is the deal. This is the deal. Uh, like, years ago, with Order of the Great Seal, I had um, Morris Tags on three cars at a, a price of New Yorker. I had a um, um, little play of neon. And I had a Subaru wagon. And I had tags on, oh, oh no, I had four cars. Because I had uh, one of them fastback Dodge Daytona, a stick. And so I had more stack tags on four cars for like almost five years. Uh, what occurred was um, some moors in New York that was Great Seal Order. We'll start selling tags and start selling um, packages to brothers and sisters without them having a background studying. And they were going out, um, parking in front of hydrogen speeding. And that rolled for a minute, you know, um, getting away with it. And then they start clamping down. They, they did a, a book with the, um, some kind of black budget. And it was actually through the youth task force and the sergeant was named Sergeant Russo. And that actually was from Camden. Um, and they put out an edict, um, sort of not, not unlike flowers in them, to stop the moors they think they ain't lawful and all that stuff. So I met with the, uh, with the law department in Cherry Hill and Camden, BTC. And the mayor was dumping me for quite a while, right? Anyway, when I finally caught up with them, they cleared the room, the deck of the room. The very one that broke that thing asked me to hook his daughter up. Mm. 
I said, you got a nationality. Don't even act like you don't know. But they cleared the room, and we met with them. I met with them in, uh, with, their, with their lawyers, in the law department in Camden, et cetera. And uh, me and Brother Harris, who passed the scene now, we still had our tags for a while. But they, then after a while, they started harassing us and harassing us. And that's when we stopped doing it and had to run around uh, teaching people because what was happening, they would arrest us and do stuff like that to, to stop us or to intimidate us, then put us out the back door type of thing or keep us in. Then we come to court time, throw us outside and all that kind of stuff just to, you know, really slow us down and then intimidate everybody. However, they know that we're right. But see, what this represents, when the Moors start entertaining their rights, that means they can't run these small townships on our people's back. And so the deal of it is, uh, in between, you have grand sheets, et cetera, who are co-intel cooperatives that was calling us renegades when they know that we're standing for the law. Mm -hmm. wow. But they know that the people don't know law. Mm -hmm. No different than what I'm just reading to you right now, mm -hmm. meaning some of you knew this, some of you didn't. Mm -hmm. But some of you may have different opinions or doubts, but when I read this, the doubts are gone. Right. The problem of it is, is that people don't know, and so people start thinking when Europeans or some mm -hmm. cop or somebody says stuff, in the law and all that stuff. They don't even know what law is. They don't know jurisprudence. They don't know jurisdiction. You know, and then they don't know that in order for a temple to be a temple, it must have a school. And it must have a newspaper. And it must teach business. And if it ain't got a school, it's not a temple. But yet here are people claiming from the temple talking about who ain't more. But people don't know that because they don't know what the obligation is to be a temple. You see the whole point, they've been getting away with it because code and telco operations have been operating so long, and so people go into these temples and they think that's a temple. And it's not that it's not a temple. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. But in order for a temple to be a temple, it must have a school. Matter of fact, one of the um, motivations of us establishing the Morris History School in New York was in order to get this information out to the people on a large scale because of New York being a hub. At the same time, that's simply from Great Seal Order and basically from the syllabus of the setup of the Rising Sun Institute, which was a school system we had started with the round table. It was actually years ago, like we owned the building that was on Kane Avenue that I bought from, um, actually, it uh, used to be an Elks, Elks Lodge. And it was a nice building, had a grand staircase that went around, beautiful building. And I had laid out, had a, a, a 107 foot auditorium, and it's 107 foot long. It's like a movie almost, like, and the Europeans tried to buy it, and I went south, they burnt it down. They burnt it twice. Whoa. Wow. And then, um, that's why we don't have the building. And um, it was 7-Eleven. Can't have another number, 7-Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and it was beautiful, and it had a skylight on the third floor with 12, 12 uh, uh, windows, big skylight in the middle of the building, like a pyramid. So it was laid out astrologically. It was beauty, beautiful. Sometimes I'll bring them a sketch in to show you the layout, um, and then we call that the Zodiacus one. Um, that was for sisters, and um, like when people were traveling through, um, we had. Uh, room where they could stay. You know, it was a beautiful building. You know, um, but they broke it down. Yeah. Now, when I got that building, um, developers from New York was coming in Camden and all this area, and they was investing like from New York and uh, upper state, and you had shells, and this is where they were doing all the buildings around um, Cooper Hospital, and it, shells were going like a for 80 and 100 grand, I mean, falling down like this, you know, for 180 grand, stuff like that. And um, I had got 13 buildings, 13 buildings, and a large building on six and spruce uh, for the temple. And that's when I left the temple down there, because I, I went there and, I, and I, I talked to Bernie Herman, and I had been in the temple. Mm, not real long, I think about six or seven months when I came to the temple. And so when I had got the information, like Sister DeRio, you see, coming on the radio, right, Sister DeRio, I used to take my son to the babysitter and that's where I met her at. 
And then uh, she had her daughter at the babysitter, and that's how I met her. And she gave me um, the uh, literature, and I read through Ali's literature. Now, of course, prior to that, years ago, I had a sister minister in the Nation of Islam. Already knew about the Nubadrali, but you could never pull, you couldn't, like, get, trying to get information would be like trying to cry elephant teeth. Right. You know, and so when I saw the literature and I read the literature and I read from, because I go behind the literature, I come, like, from behind the page and come back out. And so I didn't see who they was talking about. So I told her when I came, I said, I'm coming and fighting, I'm telling you already. You know, so in six months, you know, um, I went down Bernie Hammond. And I said, I want to see the books, because we need some property. Now I'm doing this from my concept of what I'm seeing original drawings coming from. And so he told me to come back the next day. I came back the next day with my feds on and everything. And I went down to see Carol. She was down on license and stuff. And she sent me up. I went upstairs. And he, and he uh, took two books, and he laid them out. And he closed the door. And he said, tell me what you want. So I went in there. I picked up about 13 buildings, 13 buildings, yeah, and a building on six and spruce with a large parking lot, right? I got, they was, them buildings were going for 80 grand, 100, 110, they was being auctioned. I got everything, all those buildings, including that one, I think it was for 2,200. What? All of them. And everybody else was paying 80, to a hundred and some for them. Then we was at a round, I used to have a round table at my house for, for like three days a week and I used to feed people and get them free literature. literature. I did that for about nine years until it broke me. And uh, I did that for, yeah, about nine years. And then after that, um, I started doing that Brother Lean's house and he used to be a Scientologist. And I schooled him and he, he became hot jib for the round table. And um, we held classes there until he passed the scene. Um, and then after that, I've been traveling around, cleaning up the mess that some other moors started doing, misrepresenting this information. A lot of people that I gave information to, whose names I won't mention immediately. And I've been doing that ever since, cleaning up the doo-doo that they you know, taking advantage of the people. But anyway, so uh, we went down to another auction. And we're looking, we're trying to get these big buildings, you know, so we do school and all this sort of stuff, right? And so um, I saw this um, this building that the Elks was, Elks was the live was selling, and that was the, the building I got. And they was starting at like with the big building starting off like 250 and all that kind of stuff and up. So I said, well, we're going to go down there tomorrow. And we're going to put our hands on the building so we can knock everybody down, right? And they said, oh man, it's not a dizzy stuff. I said, come on. So half of them didn't go. My brother, my brother laughed, Khalil. Right? He said, you, well, you all go do that. Me and Abdullah, brother uh, Harris, uh, Moina, a few other sisters. We went down at night. I said, now, everybody touch the knob on the door. And everybody caress the building. We're going to get this building. And so I'm going down there tomorrow. I'm getting this going. Right? So I went in the auction up there, Camden. Everybody started bidding. And I looked around. So, you know, they give you a plaque and a card, right? And then the room went silent. I got that building for 5500 mm -hmm. Got that building for 5500 And junk was going for 80 85 90 225 and stuff like that. I got that work. I got that building for 5500. It was due. That was due. No, just send you send energy out. Yeah. You know. But people got to be honorable too. Right. Them Europeans are mad. They was trying to get that building from me ever since then. Because they was trying to bid on that building and it was just like the room like locked down. You know what I mean? But the deal of it is projection. It's called projection. You know what I mean? But uh, again, then a lot of people was jealous, you know, because I told them I was going to do it and did it. And so a lot of people didn't want to help after that. And so I go in there and I spend finance fixing it up. It was a beautiful building. The architecture was beautiful and everything. And Europeans were offering me five for stuff like that. I wouldn't sell it. You know, sort of round table. 
And that, that oil painting I got, the half, Charlie, it was a German art teacher and a Vietnamese, he was training a Vietnamese artist sister. And it was a German art instructor and a Vietnamese girl, Lan Nguyen, who painted that picture for me as a gift for the round table. That's that big oil painting that I have, Drawley. Mm -hmm. And um, then I used to um, get the children together, and we used to also raise finance, give children for, for, for scholarship and stuff like that. And in the summertime, we would hold affairs at Wilson School, and they um, would work with us, you know, for the community and stuff like that. So we used to, we used to do a lot of things on a regular basis with the round table. And um, KRS one came down a few times. And that's also Reverend Bevels came down also, and Wilson met with us. And we used to go over Reverend Bevels and uh, deal with them, giving them information. Mm -hmm. And Reverend Bevels is the real brain behind the Million Man March, not Farcon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And we used to meet with him at 23rd and Allegheny. And also Life Force 2000. Also, we used to meet, what's the author's name? I forget his name. Uh, uh, Diop. Shikanta Diop. Yeah. Um, meet with him and his wife, and we gave them information. Um, but anyway, Reverend Bevels is the real one who set up the Lady Man March. Did all the strategies, he understood government. And uh, we met, we would go there every week and meet with them. And as a matter of fact, one day we were going over there, and they, we're that, we're that, a parking building is right there at the base of um, uh, the Ben Franklin Bridge, mm -hmm. where the, where the um, parking is for Rutgers now. Mm -hmm. That used to be on um, the tech building. And we were going over there one time, and, and uh, Farcon's people called me from, uh, I think they were from Chicago. Reverend, uh, that was when uh, Savis was get, got yeah, thrown out at NACP. Yeah, the James, yeah. yeah, he got thrown out. Yeah. And they were starting this so-called black constitution crap. <laughs> Anyway, so they called me, and I was on my way over to Philly, and so they asked me to stop and attend that meeting there because they had a lot of dignitaries there, the mayors and a whole bunch of local dignitaries, you know, crap, whatever. Anyway, so I went there, and that's where I met Valero and um, um, Dean, um, what was his name? Uh, White, what was her name? Her last name was White. Went to Delaware University, White, and that's where that's where I met Valerie. And, that, and after that, I taught Valerie for about three years. Mm. Valerie Harvey. Bay. That's where I met her at. And um, we raised them at that point. And I remember there was a lot of dignitaries on the um, in the back, and they were come, kept coming out talking about time, time because we were talking because. Oh, Beverly White, Beverly White, that's her name, Dean at Delaware State University. And Valor, and she was an engineer, and her husband, uh, engineer over there. And she looked at lesson book 14, 5, and 2, you know, because we were just passing through, we was in the audience. Anyway, she got up there, she had tears in her eyes. She said, you what? Y'all never intended us to tell none of this. She was talking to all the ministers and all of them. People, because she was working in the background, she worked for Farcon. She did a lot of the setup for them. And they threw that down and said, pull all the chairs up. And they put all the chairs around. And that's what our meeting was. And that's when Valor became conscious. So, I mean, you know, I've got a lot of stories to tell. A lot of people don't know, unless they're in the circles, a lot of things that they see in public ain't really what's up. Right. Ain't really what's up. You know, so when people look at William and Marsh, they think of Farcon, we know it's Bevels. Do, do you understand what I'm saying to you? But uh, no big deal, but it, it's like that. And so over the years, a lot of people, we've shared information, we've brought, brought them up. You know, same thing I did at the TV show down Time Warner, down in North Carolina, to clean up some mess down there. When you see that movie, um, um, what's that, um, what's that? The Shock Kids, something like that. What's that movie? No, uh, we just, it was about morals, anyway. Oh, but anyway, but the brother that they give kudos from in the, in the credits in, in the back had to go down there and clean up some stuff that he was doing, selling stuff. Same old stuff. 
And so, and that's when the, because uh, we had to do TV, and, and you know how they set up the stage for you after one show go up, they, they set up the props. Mm -hmm. And so one of the ministers down there, they was wondering why these Europeans were giving us all this royal treatment. You know, because the, the people, they don't come down for them. They just, you know, have some managers. They came down giving us donuts and coffee and everything. And they was just curious because we getting all this attention. These Europeans, you know, they made sense, man. You know, anyway. But, you know, so the ministers, it was a, a two minister shows, one before and one after we was on. And they was looking through the glass, you know, you have the, all the glass panels from the studio. And the next week, that minister nationalized and she was, oh. had clothes and everything and started the whole thing down there. She got a couple of million from the people. Mm. Had to clean up stuff that they did. Mm. I mean, it, it goes on and on and on. But I also know that in due time, the people will get this comprehension of this information and the youth coming in will clean this mess up. Mm -hmm. However, you gotta bring them in with a, a solid foundation. Mm -hmm. right? And everybody has to work their demons out. They have to work through all the True trash. That. True that. You know, because they have to learn that this is the world's largest estate. So when they get this information, wow. they really don't recognize how big this thing mm -hmm. is. It's bigger than everything. Because mm -hmm. most of the time, we're looking at our immediate problems. Mm -hmm. We do have immediate problems. Right. Right. You know, but it takes them a minute to understand that this Morris Dubon and National Movement is the divine counter move to the Inquisition operations that have stagnated the world for the last six, seven, yes. 700 years. Yes. You know, yes. and so they underestimated because mm. Nobu Dwali presented this so humbly. Mm. And he presented it in such a simplistic way that people underestimated. But as soon as you start studying it, it will open up gates of knowledge that wow. you never imagined was there. You know, so you can comprehend why it was so important for both the Europeans and also for people who have less than honorable intentions to try to do whatever they can to undermine it. It is inevitable, however, if they can stagnate it, that gives them mandate. So anyway, understand no matter where this information is coming from, understand that this is actually a counter move to the Inquisition operations. Mm -hmm. And if you keep your head there, you can easily recognize who's selling you out and who's not. You know, you, it's not even debatable, but if you don't have reference points, you can get caught up in the emotions, because we all have emotions and we all have shortcomings. You know, and so you get caught up in personalities, which you should not do. You stay, stick with principles. You understand, you measure everybody by principles, no matter who. And this is why I always tell people, don't accept what we say, who was wrong. And in doing so, you will learn much. There's much to be learned. Mm -hmm. And but again, just like this stuff that come out now, we got something for them. Mm -hmm. You know, but all it is is opportunity to expand, to learn, yeah. to expand. All right. Yeah. It, 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 these guys, it, it, Chicago, Baltimore, where, where are you from? They, they're doing this. Oh, that's from Atlanta. 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 But, but they don't have. Because to I'm not. Yeah, they but I'm just saying. I'm not. I'm not other. even. Be honest with you. I'm not even, like, because I'm used to it, you know, because I'm a warrior. Right. And, but even when I put literature out, I always put literature out of sequence because I already went ahead and looked at their stuff. So I already knew it, you know, so this is one of the reasons why I always put literature out of sequence. And so I already got chess pieces for them. Man. Step ahead. You know, because, I mean, they ran sheets. Does she know the ethereal plane? You know, they say they are. Go ahead. You know, so I don't need finances. I just need to breathe for a minute. As long as I'm here, I can beat them. You got any more of those? Yeah. I can beat them. Can you get one for me, too? Yes, ma'am. I thought that was something else. That reminds me of what I had said I forgot when I left. That was to tell the younger people who are here or whatever that they should not stay on it. Mm -hmm. I'll strive towards never ever getting the driving yeah. license That's and right in that way it would be in better shape. Yeah, people got to know what it is and what it isn't. She already, she already got so they can't give you a ticket against it if you don't have one. And what they do is they look, because there's some people just recently. They that, even, you know, what, had one and they no, what they do. They don't make one and they give it to you and then it's suspended. Yeah, yeah, right, no. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Now, a, a policy enforcer said, 
he asked me about a license. I said, it's void. And he was like, well, the license is never void. And I thought about it. I said, so then what the hell do they, do? like, lock people up for, quote, unquote, driving while suspended if it's never void? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, if oh, I yeah, say I'm yeah, void, yeah, yeah. why are y'all doing that? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Well, that was just a comment. Oh, right. Right. The trick that they do is when you take the reading test and you take the driving test, permission, permit, they give you a permit and they give, once you park in parallel park, you get a certificate of competency to operate the vehicle. Then they want you to go inside and trade that in for a license. Yay. Once you get your certificate of competency, you're good to go. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because <laughs> because cause that is the other thing. When the Moorish nations talk about having jobs and all that kind of stuff, well, if we don't go get the driving license instrument from the corporate jurisdiction, that doesn't mean that there shouldn't be places that teach us our children how to operate a vehicle. Good thing to start the business for. You still got to learn how to operate, but it doesn't mean you need a license in order to operate. See, this is this is first thing that must be this is the first thing that must be comprehended, and this is why we did driver's license fraud. Everything that you deal with first is, is comprehend and have a knowledge of what it's for. So this is first the foundation that you must comprehend. Licenses <clears throat> are for corporate entities right. doing business in a corporate capacity. Upon that privilege, a license is extended. It applies to corporations only. That's right. Once you understand that, all the rest of the wow. arguments are dead. Mm -hmm. This is why they create the 14th Amendment corpse to slay the living. Mm -hmm. They need to get so-called black leaders to get you to agree to be a person of color so they can list you as a corpse. Mm -hmm. That's what the 14th Amendment is for. Mm -hmm. And so the corpse is animated to slay the living. Mm -hmm. And it's signified in reverse order where they have that movie where Lincoln the Vampire Slayer, only the living can slay the dead. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. Lincoln, Emancipation yes. Proclamation, you got to understand right. what this yes, 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 yes. Right. <laughs> oh, and you know another thing, Twelve, I'm going to make this comment, because I'm going to ask um, Dr. Long if you would play this so everybody can hear it, or did you already do that? No, I didn't. Okay, good. But i got to add this one thing, um, and that is that if you look at 12 Years a Slave, have you noticed mm. how they've been putting out a lot of stuff now about mm -hmm. Proving that we are not all slaves, that we were not all because we weren't. Matter of fact, the whole slavery thing had nothing world. to do with us, it had to do with Europeans. Servants, and they were indentured servants. If you read the Constitution, mm -hmm. it tells you who's who, and they're talking about indentured slaves. They were Slavics, they were not us. We That's were right. not the slaves that right. were being free. That's right. And so, what had happened is since we're coming to that realization, because we were enslaved, and we're still in mental slavery, but not. And that's what Duali said, I came to, take to redeem you, you all from the from mental slavery, slavery which you have now. But all of these movies are now coming out and proving to the people that, guess what? You weren't the slaves. Now, here's an interesting thing. For years, we and others have been saying, guess what? You're not Negro color and black. And that's been a pill to swallow. Now, all of a sudden, and guess what else? You're not even the slaves that they're talking about giving independence to. It's for the European. Never was for you. That's why, and, and oh, and one other thing, and Todd, you can affirm this. I didn't understand at first when I was reading um, the Moorish literature, the prophet's work. And he is giving you keys in everything that he ever wrote. One of the places is not just a bio warning, but message to America, where he shows you all of the great things that we built and did. And if you go and research that, then you begin to find out, oh, shoot, we are the mothers and fathers of civilization. The other thing is he kept saying that, you, you know, of course, that you didn't need the 14th Amendment because the Constitution of 1774 was already in place. He's trying to let you know that the Constitution for the Republic, United States of America, really wasn't written for you. It's for you to enforce it. And he's bringing you back to 1774 so you would get that. Okay, that the Articles of Confederation is still valid against them. You getting it? And one last thing that I recently discovered in my uh, my uh, sabbatical time, I guess, is that he also gave another clue that we just got. 
He said that slavery was from 1774 to 1865. Mm -hmm. But if you do studies, you will find out that mm, we weren't slaves during that time. Because the sundry free moors did their thing in 1790, for one thing. But the other thing, right, he's telling, see, so he gave you the keys to go, and he said study. If you study it with all the other keys, you will see what he was trying to tell you. Because now it makes sense that we were not slaves, because if that were the case, the sundry free moors would say, look, I don't know what y'all doing, but I ain't subject to that. I ain't no Negro. All right, what's go whatever's going on, because those were people who were the indentured slaves and the, and the European Slavics. Mm -hmm. And then the Br Great Britain's hold was really your cousin, the British Moors, the Brutish Moors, who wanted to keep them in slavery. Mm -hmm. Simple as that, and they, and they got mad at us, at those who were other Prussian Moors who wanted to take them out of slavery. But we had to stop it at some point because we created them, Yakubian experience, in the first place, and so therefore it has to stop. And that's why we did it, but our own, we're fighting each other. And that's what he was bringing us to recognize. So once I saw the 1774, and then I looked at this, because you know, a lot of people say, well, we were slaves during that time. A slave can't, can't write treaties. A slave can't do this, you know, because there's elder Moors that mean well, that will say things like that, because in their mind, they believe we're slavery. We're slaves. So when I saw that, I said, oh, that's what that's about. We were not. And lastly, we broke down because it was hard to get, and we needed to, about who's who in the Constitution in terms of uh, those who were the three fifths. We got that. You can easily say, oh, yeah, that means without a name and nationality, but it's deeper than that. The Constitution is designed to stop and abolish slavery, believe it or not, even, the, even against those who wanted to maintain it. But it was, still wasn't us that were slaves. So the three fifths really is a count because, though, like, prophet said that, that the 14th Amendment uh, and the, the war and everything was to bring the South and the North together, right? Who wanted slavery, right? Mm -hmm. To try to bring them together because they were opposing power. Bring back into power. Right. So, so what I is he saying? I, at that time without power. Without the South. The South, right? Okay. So what it is is that the South wanted to count representation now is what happened with the Constitution, right? Mm -hmm. But the South said, well, we're going to count our slaves. And they were like, oh, no, no, in, in an effort to abolish and, and put it where it is, you can't count each slave in as one full mm -hmm. being. Unless you, free. Be unless you free them. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're property. I may as well count my chair mm -hmm. if it's property. Mm -hmm. That was the effort. And that's what the three-fifths really represent. So that they wouldn't have unbalanced representation based on the amount of slaves. The whole thing was to stop slavery, the Constitution, as best could be. All right? But there still was indentured slaves, and it still was slavery. And then in 1808 is when it was supposed to be abolished formally. If you listen to the Glenn Black, January 1 really is celebrating the formal dissolution completely of Slavery, supposed to be slave trade, trafficking. The Emancipation the Proclamation, the trafficking uh -huh. of slaves. The trafficking of slaves, In excuse me. 1808, the trafficking, because they wanted slavery no matter what and at all costs. Why? They had none. You've got to watch making the vampire slave. Mm -hmm. They're telling you that they were trying to create a nation on their own. This stuff is real. But yeah. you'll notice that that movie came out, and then the other one about the Emancipation Proclamation came on its heels very quickly to keep you from paying attention and get confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, did you see the Lincoln movie? You think it's the one about the, uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, right? But it really was the one called the Vampire Slayer that came out that you really needed to see. That's right. And la right, so this is how because they control the media. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, the um, 12 years of slave. Now, all of this slave stuff is coming out, but if you really know what you know and have keys, it's all coming out to tell you that we were not slaves. Now, I had one person admit the other night, and it was very bold of him and honorable of him. He said, You know, I didn't want to watch this, this uh, movie, um, 12 Years a Slave, because 12 Years a Slave is straight up telling you that we weren't slaves. We were royalty up in the north, right? Mm -hmm. And I don't think it was a European who put the brother into slavery. I think it was a Brutish Moor, because remember, we were on this ground fighting each other. Mm -hmm. And that's going to come out next, but that's just my opinion of what I think, because Europeans weren't in that much power to do that.
They really weren't. Right. It tasted Jesse Owens to catch a Jesse Owens. So all of that's going to come out later. But I lastly want to say this. I lastly want to say this. It still was showing you that we were not the slaves. So here, here we have, here we have um, uh, 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 the fact that you know we're told that we're not Negroes. Now we're told that we're not slaves. Now we're going to be told that you know y'all, you you know this is a gradual thing. Mm -hmm. You put each other into slavery. Mm -hmm. That the Europeans really are just the spoilers of your war, and they don't know how to let it go. And the reason they don't know how to let it go is because they're the only people on the planet that don't have a home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all that Liz wants to live. Mm -hmm. So now that's how this thing is gonna go, or that's how it is. Mm -hmm. And Django, the rank of the I keep calling it the rank of Django and <laughs> the the 12 years of I do. 12 years of slave was so good because it taught a lot of things. Never go drink and be married with people you don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because they might just drug you up. Mm -hmm. And two, that how could you really be living good in the north, if we will, knowing you have brethren in the south that are being enslaved. Right. But the other part to that is, again, back to Prophet and with your elite, because it's mental. Why? In the movie, what did the guy say to each other? The more educated, royal, trapped, kidnapped ones, you know, whatever, they all were, really? He said, oh, no, no, we can't, we can't get them to help us. They're born and bred slaves. Mm -hmm. Talking about his brethren. Mm -hmm. They don't know no different. That's mental slavery. You see, that's what he was pointing out. And then when you look at Durango, I mean Durango, Django. Oh, at the end of 12 Years a Slave, one of the things I liked the most, because I was taught, I was brought up and taught, you know, in this, you stand in your square, and I am, right? And then, you know, Moses says I am that I am, right? And then at the end of the movie, what did that man say? Though? Of all things to say, I am who I say I am. That's what he said when the Sharif's, or those who were acting as Sharif's, came to get him with the papers. In the end, he says, I am that I am. And another, lastly, and Durango, I mean, Django. <laughs> Django, because it has a D in front. I know, I know, there's a movie called Durango. Um, it shows you that he was not a slave either, because first of all, they opened up the movie saying two years before the Civil War, mm -hmm. right, to let you know. And secondly, he was educated up until he was enslaved. He could read, he could read, remember? Mm -hmm. yep. Because he wasn't a slave mm -hmm. until they captured him mm -hmm. or kidnapped him. Mm -hmm. Then he became such. Well, and then lastly, you held up, this is it, the German. The, I gotta tell you this. The, the German sister, and she was a sister. No, wait a minute. The guy with the tooth, the tooth fairy guy that was his, that was the hunter. He was the bounty he was hunter. He was German. Mm -hmm. German is the German, the first germs, right. you know, creating the letter. Okay, what did he say to the to the to the mom? He says, "I am obligated to assist you." Mm -hmm. In the beginning, remember? Mm -hmm. He says, "I'm obligated to and assist that's, you." That's what you call um, that's a thirty-three degree mm -hmm. minimum. Okay, now that's, you, that's you, one of the things that they that they must do. That they um, must do if you proclaim to be who yeah. you are or more, you will get a lot of assistance. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'll get so much assistance. You won't believe it, all right? Look at their but you had to, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the other thing is, Brunhilda was the sister who they say was named because she was a slave for a German. Miss, tell them the truth about Brunhilda, the true sister that was truly a German queen. She wasn't German. She was. Uh, I mean, well, she was a Moor, yeah. part of the Belgian. No, in real life. What they really, what they really wasn't that she could speak German. No, no, listen. This is the whole deal. The dramatic cut tones come to derive from Sanskrit. And what they're signifying with her is they're signifying St. Maurice. Now, right, but really there was a sister. In real history. In real history. It's yeah, sister. yeah, I know. We want to tell it. Well, she's not just the only one. See, they try to no, make I know, no, no, but we want to tell yeah. that because a lot of people don't know that. Oh, yeah, go, mm -hmm. go ahead. Yeah. No, that's the, that's the fact. Because that's what history, they're signifying. It is a, it, you can type it in, Google it, whatever you want to do. It is a sister in real history that was a part of the Merovingian dynasty. Mm -hmm. Where her appellation was Brunhilde. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right, so knowing that and knowing what you're saying, Ty, 
to what it attaches to if you know your history. Then you have all these keys to see these movies. But here's the truth of the matter, because it's always been saying that said that it's um hidden in plain sight. But if it's in plain sight, then it really isn't hidden. The, the situation is that you either have keys of knowledge or you don't. Right. Because what you find out even in our development today is we could go back and look at some movies. This stuff has always been there. Mm -hmm. Always. But what people it's forgot was that on the um, Django, when he first went and picked him out, he said, he said, which one you want? And he said, I want the American. Yeah. Oh, no, but did you yeah. see after he sold them, he said, sold American? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. He said, sold them. Nobody caught that. Yeah. Yeah. Sold American. That means that was an American because we are the true, true, true American. And, and another thing, I don't like it when people say, well, we can't call ourselves Native American because that's what these so-called Indians do. No, you have to be what you are. We are the Native American, and just because they're utilizing it, you have to take it back. We're the Native American, we're the true American, we're the national, American national, we're the more American national. And I got one question for you, Charles. What is the importance or non-importance non of stay, stating for your nationality that you are a Moorish American, and I know that is a political jurisdiction that was that was established by Prophet Nubudrali, indicating everything that goes with it, you know, territory, ancestral, or saying I am a more American. You can say you can say either either one either now, because actually, because Moorish is because we're mixed. More. That's number one. Mixed to what? We're, everybody's mixed now. Oh, of course, and everybody's now, more. I, that's I why like Moorish. That. Now that refers to anything Moorish, and we're I'm rocking. Because it's almost like um, oxymoron. Al Moroccan is really descended of Moroccan. Right, born in you know, born Al, America. Latin coming down from, and Moroccan. Um, now, the deal of it is, is when you uh, comprehend real world politics, the, um, the, the Moors are the mothers and fathers of the human family. Uh, so that means anybody on the planet can claim to be Moor. Mm. That's true. Now, wow. even this is why, like you've seen, that, as, you, as you already know from our experience, a couple years ago, uh, some Europeans in the West went on the site, mm -hmm. got the proclamations and claimed houses mm -hmm. to protect themselves mm -hmm. successfully, mm -hmm. even though they uh, give some of the brothers and sisters more trouble because, you, you know, that represents momentum. Um, and uh, as an example, when I was putting on... Um, just as an example, when I was putting the addition on my brother's house and I was tramming out, laying out the lines to dig, I also had to move the septic tank, which was bad anyway, so I had to move that anyway, because I'm putting a 40 foot, 48 foot addition to the length of the house, putting a new garage on balconies, cathedral ceilings, etc., changing the whole roof system to accommodate this, this new order. Now, me and uh, my brother's going to go down to New Pulse um, to rent a backhoe. And you already know you need big, big bucks to rent for down payment, etc. And so many notes a day. So it would have been in the thousands, right? Now, um, my brother lives in um, Highland, and that's, uh, that's really up from New Pulse, just before the river. Uh, Poughkeepsie's on the other side. And that's pretty like a uh, upper middle class area, like, right? And he's on a corner, and uh, he got one of the nicest houses there. Now, when I put the addition on the house, that's going to increase the value a lot, and you know, so this um, Europeans are always walking their dogs around there all the time, right? And he's um, one of the few Asiatics in the, in the in the community in that part, you know. Mostly, it's mostly Europeans. And they stop asking, they wave, hey, out, blah, 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 you know. Oh, see, you're doing something different, blah, blah, you know, because I come up there all the time doing work on the house. So it's apparent that I'm doing a big project. So this guy walks past, and he's, he used to uh, work for Hudson, Central Hudson. He's an engineer. And um, he asked Al, my brother Al, you know, what you doing? Al says, my brother's putting an addition on the house, we've been playing it, blah, 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 you know, just going the conversation. So Al is going, his wife, Alice, is making us some tea and stuff like that. And um, so he starts talking to me. And my brother introduced me to him and stuff like that. And he says, well, why are, you know, 
why is your name Bay and why is Cole, right? And I said, because I'm national, right? So he stays out and starts talking because he's walking his dog, so he starts talking. And then we, and we go through a little bit, and he asked me, do I have any books or anything to give him? I said, I've got a few things in, in the house, I'll get you some stuff. And he says, my wife's Italian, she tells me all about the Moors, mm -hmm. etc." Mm -hmm. Now, now they're used European, right? So, um, so we're telling them what we're doing and stuff like that. We gotta go down to New Falls and, you know, rent the backhoe. Now they're gonna have to order from another place because we need a big backhoe. And they're, they got equipment there, but not big enough for us because I'm really digging a 48 foot trench. I'm, you know, laying out pipes and everything, septic tank and doing everything. Um, so we're talking, we used to talk about a couple hours and stuff, you know. And um, so I'm going out laying stuff still laying out, right, tramming out. And about an hour and a half later, we hear this rumbling, 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 rumbling. <laughs> you know, was, you could tell it like heavy truck in that in that area, you know, because it's like, you know, trucks don't like come in that area, like, you know what I mean? So we look at this big trailer coming around. He pulls up on a lot, because we got a big, you know, lot. Pulls up on a lot, pulls the tractor off the lot, Puts it down, brings two cans of hydraulic fluid, give me the key, say, when you finish with it, call me. Mm. It's my number. I never met the man before in my life. Told you things and he saved us thousands of notes. Mm. And that's the respect he had just because of that day. Mm -hmm. So Europeans, even Europeans will help you. You never can tell. Mm -hmm. I have a question. You know, now that's my brother's, my brother used to work at Central Hudson. They know each other for years. Right? But now, no tell on the bay, he brings the back home, saves us thousands of notes. I have another question for you about identification in terms of, I know that the big, big, that's the other big, big thing is for everyone to know that everybody really is a more, but not everybody is an heir. Now, and this is the reason, but because of the jurisdiction, you got to keep in mind, the operations, inquisition operations, the hub from which they're executing their secret treaty of Verona is from Washington. And it's essentially, when you look at chapter 47, and then you look at, say, the Berlin Conference, you look at the uh, battles, um, Battle of Tours, Poitiers, uh, et cetera, the target is the hub of the Moorish Empire, which is the North Gate, which they call in secret societies the North Gate, which is North America. Now, Moors are all over the land, from the east to the west. It is the Moors of the Western Hemisphere that are a main key to this whole mess. And we're the ones that lost the estate. You can tell them distinguished from the others because those, the ones who lost their birthright totally, are branded Negro, Black, Colored, West Indians, ETC. The rest of the civilized world still have nationalities, even though many of them are contemporary juristic orders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to protect the estate of the heirs of the world's largest estate, because when people start looking at the transfer, everybody's trying to claim the estate. Just like Raleigh said, he says, before I brought you back your name and your nationality, nobody was telling you anything. Mm -hmm. Now that I told you the truth about your name and nationality, and brought you back the title of your lost estate. Now everybody's telling, trying to tell you what Islam is and what Islam is not. Mm. He said they didn't tell you anything before. Don't let them tell you anything now. Wow. Now, but my question is, as now, far well, as giving finish, a European finish, finish. a nationality, Moorish American. Keep in mind, the sovereign authority, the sovereign authority of any nation state that exercised authority can establish jurisdictions, provinces, ETC, for protection of the heirs of the lost estate. The political forum was set up, Moorish American, to distinguish you from the rest of the Moors around the world, because everybody is essentially descendants of the Moors to protect you, because people have been both selling you out and undermining you. This is the political forum, and it is done by right. Okay. And it's authoritative. Now, Deal. People who really don't comprehend that would try to pick it apart when they really 
have no standing. Right. Because one, they don't understand world politics. They're really thinking these political jurisdictions are ancient. Most of them are contemporary. Mm -hmm. This is why in the Attic Chamber you talk, you talk about nations, nations is a fiction. It is the Moabite nation. Mm -hmm. The Moabite nation descended into the Moorish nation. That's right. All of your other nation states are breakups of the Moorish empire. They are breakups of the province. And this is why he says, go and study. He says, he says, go back to the state of mind of your ancient mothers and fathers. And now the last legal name of these Asiatics is Moor. Now, the deal of this, that's all over the planet. And when you go into the war records, and then when you go into the jurisdiction states of the world, you'll see that African and Moor are used synonymously. Right. Now, and this is so that everybody can't come claim your estate. Right. That's Moorish American. So now, what happens somebody, if there's a European today who is who, who has become naturalized under the U.S.I.A., recognizing that they gave up their nationality to do so, and now they're um, expatriating out of that, and they want the Moors nation to give naturalize them, them because we have the authority to but, do so. But how would you no, you said naturalize. Naturalize. But what would it say for their natural they can't be under See, the flag? This, the, no listen, they can't listen, I'm asking you. They cannot let, let's back be up, under let's, our back, flag. let's back up. Let's back up. Let's back up. England, Germany, ETC are essentially ascended territories by the Moors Druids. The Danes and the Dubs and the Moors. Mm -hmm. See, the nobles of England were Moors. Mm -hmm. You know, correct. and see the concept that people have of um, Europe being the European pales. That's why you must make the distinction. I, I, yes, um, I, I know. Because um, the hybrids um, are essentially the German. That's what the German yeah. man. Right. This is why when you're looking at European history, they will tell you that all of the Europeans, France, England, blah, blah, all of them are simply Germans. Mm -hmm. They broke off into tribes, mm -hmm. and these are, are juris political yeah. jurisdictions that are absolutely contemporary. Now, people who don't understand nation states or juristic nations from kings and queen nations go into history and say, well, how can a Frenchman be a king of England? And how can a king of France be an Englishman? It's because they don't understand history. And see, so our people not really understanding nationality stuff confuses them. It doesn't confuse people who know the real sociology. And so people who are still looking at the, uh, what you call the static juristic, uh, um, um, corporate juristic nations, they don't know the difference between consanguinity and juristic action. They don't know the difference between person and person. You know, and so that's most of the people like that meaning, well, I can't be Moorish American. I ain't been in Moorish America. That's my rock. You know, well, that's fine. They have no, listen, they have no claim to the state. However, we ain't arguing with them. Our issue is to save the youth. Right, 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 but before we go, exactly. Not only to save the youth, which is saving us, because the work we do is for the youth, and since we are them, we turn it's really for the nation. I got that. What I'm saying is, these Europeans who are here, who yeah. don't want to necessarily leave here, who don't want to go. They got to the, they, they they the 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 of some of our Moorish sons. Let's answer it. What? How do you write the card for them because yes, they you, can't let's be back up. Let's back up. Let's back up. First of all, we gotta get our order in place. Just like we gotta fix this crap, some of this crap now. Right, so don't even <clears> Now listen, Jurali said, look, you know the confusion was gonna come. That's not the issue, he already prepared for it. He says, he says, if you're around a bunch of Moors that create a lot of confusion and are not carrying out my law, get out from mm -hmm. under them. Mm -hmm. Go find somebody that's doing good and help them do more good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, let's look at the uh, literature. Nobodrali's literature, he had in the newspaper a section for all groups of people, all nationals, all groups of people that were helping in the universal struggle for human rights and human upliftment. As a matter of fact, that's the way the newspaper was set up. When Dr. Ali was on the scene, it was even Europeans 
that came to the temples. See, so a lot of things that people are saying now are misrepresentations of the Noble Draw Lake. As a matter of fact, the Moorish Orthodox Church, which you will find mostly in the West, are Europeans that followed the prophets. As a matter of fact, many of your so-called freedmen are people who are influenced by them. But did he put Moorish American under the continent of, or well, the flags, whichever one he wanted to use? See, this is the distinction. First blood are naturalized. Nationalized. Uh, aliens are naturalized. I got that. When you look at Jefferson, Tom Jefferson, Ben Franklin, Georgie, and all those boys, they were naturalized. Of course. Now, this is this distinction that people need to understand why all of the Europeans um, who belong to secret societies who uh, pledge honor have a Morris Feds. This is why it is in all of your secret societies that are in honor. Right, but what and then goes the Daughters the of the American Revolution, Revolution, who write the citizenship manual, right. trace their lineage to European women who were in Moorish harems. Of course. Now, so when things. you know, and this is why you see Dolly Madison, she right. wouldn't go out without a feds. Right. And when you go right there to the marble building, to the DAR, they'll show you her clothes with her turban. Our concepts, again, as you was explaining earlier, are wrong how we look at this thing because we have a lot of biases <coughs> because of the mistreatments that we have. And so we have a tendency to nitpick, you know, trying to, in the name of correcting things without <coughs> knowing what went down, if you get the point. Yes. And so you have a lot of other people who don't want to acknowledge what Noble Drawley did, so they want to try to club this thing and think they're going to claim an estate. Ain't got yeah. none. Do you, do you, you understand? Right. The world recognized you because the Sharif brought you out of darkness into light. Mm -hmm. And you ain't, in other words, you ain't got to be with the club. You got to be with the Moorish Divine National Movement. Thereby, the world recognizes you. But wait a minute. My point, my question is still, unless I'm missing something. No, that's what the Moorish. That's what the Moorish American is. It's a specific political. No, no, no. Forum. I'm talking about. I got that. I got yeah. that. I understand that because really American and more is the same thing, really. Yes, it's like a redundancy. It's a redundancy. What yeah. I'm saying is on the card for the naturalized European. This is what takes place. Is listen, 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 listen. Let's make this very clear. It was naturalized. When we're in order, and it does, it, you use your common sense, this is the reason why we even put what natural naturalized is, this thing is yeah. from naturalized, <coughs> then in the treaty book, when yeah. we even talk, when they go into United States law on citizenship and expatriation. And right. it says, right in United States law, Morocco. Right. Then it says the only way that Moors lost their nationality is by naturalization. Mm -hmm. Right. But they're talking about the firstborn, you see. Hey, this is what the 14th the Amendment born. serves. This I'm is what the 14th about. Amendment serves. Now the Europeans who are still in your birthright is represented in the book of Genesis where the hairy one, the, the, ready, the ready red one, or Rome man, that's what Roman means, red, red man, you see? Right. And, this, and so when looking at Isaac, you know, chapter 25, 2 and 5 and 7, uh -huh. and then what it is, he's still in the birthright. And so Isaac prays to Allah and says, well, you know, my wife can't be pregnant, can you hook me up? So he said, yeah, you got this covered, you know, so she has, she's with child. And so the book is giving you a Kabbalistic metaphoric and a metaphysical expression of the twinship. It doesn't call it twins. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It says she is carrying two different nations, uh -huh. Uh -huh. two different manner of people. Uh -huh. It's talking about the Yakub experiment. Of course. You see? And so yet they both come from the same moon. Now you see where the European, when they get in a higher degree, they got to do what? Do some service to their mother? Mm -hmm. For their mother? Mm -hmm. Which is the most important. When you understand these things, you understand the whole picture. But uh, back to point. We're the firstborn. And so now when you look at um, Isaac being blind and Rebecca helping to deceive Isaac for the theft of the birthright from the firstborn, and this is parallel, and this is why I did uh, a woman called Rebecca. Now, this is also why the European called Mataoka, 
Rebecca. You see? And then they took her to Gravesend and threw her overboard, and then they set up the first aristocracy here in Virginia, and then they cut off part of Virginia called Alexander, Alexander the Great, and that's where George Washington and the Sonic Lodge is. you got to look at all the, everything that they do has, they're telling you your own history. But the point that I'm making, let's get back to the point. And you'll even see as we saw in there, and they started moving stuff around after we started taking people there on a regular basis. And you even seen pictures there where you see European Masons in the audience with Asiatics, a whole troop of Asiatics on the stage. That's who was on the stage. All Asiatics, Europeans was in the audience. Mm. You know, and so the deal of it is, um, and this is where Abdullah has been working to, to make that connection with many Moors brothers who are in the different lodges who have a misunderstanding what they, of what they really have to start networking so that we can start bringing the people together. And our real problem is, is that on one hand, we acknowledge the nationhood and then we have this tendency to keep trying to get back into our clubisms. Uh, and it's, it's like it's got this, this lock box over here somewhere. But to protect the Moors, the heirs, because we have a lot. This is why Drawley said, he said, I'm going to keep the European here long enough to teach you all government. And this is a fraud when the grand sheiks talk about this is only a religious organization. They don't teach civics. And government is the science. I mean, civics is the science of government. I know. I mean, all you got to do is even use the proper words and knock all this stuff out. But the major thing is when you wash this all around, people are trying to debate we ain't Moorish Americans. We're only Moors. It's because they don't understand jurisdiction. I and I, I, I comprehend it. I comprehend it. But I also ain't got time to keep playing with them. But the, see, my question, I mean, my question now is this. And maybe I need to do a little more. But my question now is this. We're coming back into whatever we have to come into. When the, I mean, our, into our place and taking our place. When the European who is here, the naturalized European, who really isn't naturalized because the only people that can really naturalize... They gotta get naturalized and the only, no. this is what happened. Okay, but you now listen to my question. You're not. You've so got to asking. do that. You've got to build... Okay, now you're where I'm at. No, I understood from the beginning. No, but my yeah. question is, can on the yeah. card... Can, can, can we get this one? Yeah, on the card, what Peace. would you put on Peace. there Peace. for Peace. their nationality? Peace. Wait. Would it be Moorish American German descent? You said Moorish German can now. What? <laughs> she wants to. She wants to. Yeah. I've been. I've been. She wants us to to end so everybody can go. Home. But my question, and I guess I'll ask you later. What would you put on their nationality card? Because we're the ones who offer. You would them. make a naturalization card that would be not exactly like ours. I know that. Would it say more? Would it say? Would it say more? Amer would say? Would it say American with German descent? What would it say? I got all that. It would still say, you would say German, naturalized, naturalized Moorish American. Naturalized? Naturalized. Yeah, I know, but wouldn't they be, wouldn't they be an American of German descent? No. We're yeah, American. you can put it that German American or whatever. We're American. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, and then say Because we're American. And then nationalized in the Moorish nation. I naturalized, I'm sorry, American. Just American like you descent. would be. Uh, uh, like say, in, as political jurisdictions stand right now, right? Uh, like if a Chinese were was in Germany, they could get naturalized, and they would have Germany's German citizenship, but they still be Chinese. But they would have a German citizenship identification card, just like anybody from any other nation state. Our job would be, as we're cleaning up our own house, and, and as you're thinking, as you're thinking right now. Yeah. You would be thinking to fix this mess. No, but that, I never think you get it, but I'm not going to 